Nicholas is not there. Garen dying just before that very risky fight or dragon attempt in the first place. This may just be the throw. His red side is slowly trying to claw the way back in, but Lycan Wraith is going to be taken out by Pike Assassinated, and uh, that's going to be that gold value share. Not able to get. Oh, that's going to cost you. Nini here on the other hand, here for the counter bumpkin boy in a little bit of trouble. See you below. The cheeky, cheeky turn back, but Echo. Wait, Berserk? There it is. Realizes, hang on, Karzix is uh, not where I thought you'd be. Let's pick up the kill. Hold on my head, misposition. A buff, but. Uh, oh, Rotation. Slash, we know mid side, hole in my head. A lot of damage. They're not going to be applied. The barrier is going to be burned very early, but Berserk finding himself in an awkward situation. Yeah. The Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to a, another game for VS Gaming High School Esports League. Uh, with me, myself, Sinister Smiley, and Sheepy. Uh, we are casting at the moment. We will be casting on the left side, blue team. It is uh, IBC or Wonderboom, and on the right side, it is PRG or Paul Ruiz Gymnasium. And uh, it's another pretty hard matchup. We're gonna we casted them a little bit earlier today. Um, Peanut again on a different jungler at the moment so uh, seeing some interesting picks also coming through from wonderboom i mean we have a team of it but what leaks seems to be the maybe the mid laner i think i mean they're not probably in order so i'm not completely sure what's going on there uh yeah we hate to see it but uh that's gonna be a team eh? we had a hover earlier today but uh, not quite locked in so finally gonna have that uh ibc team eh? On the field, we'll see if it does, if it works. I mean, they've got a bit of a Yordle comp coming through with that Vega TMA combination, plus uh, the Blitzcrank, which I believe they're actually playing Blitzcrank currently in the world scene on the on the competitive uh, international waters. So let's we'll see whether the Blitzcrank works out in the local scene as well. Yeah, Galio, we... I believe, buffed too. So I like the Galio pickup. Yeah, just uh, we did see RNG play the Blitzcrank, so that's a. Uh... It's a pretty good one. We see hook, hook champs on both teams, actually. But uh, the thing is, as well, it seems like Peanut is actually playing pretty much what he's been practicing recently. So Pantheon is another pick he's been practicing. So not something that he is completely unfamiliar with. So not a problem there. We actually do also see that Abnormal Slime, since there's no more time to change. Abnormal Slime was the ADC earlier today, and he has the Mordekaiser. So it seems like we're actually going to have Mordekai to ADC. Uh, last Airblade, which was the mid laner, is Irelia, so I'm taking that's mid. And then we have PRG, Galio is the top laner, Galio, and Nautilus on support. So, uh, interesting picks to have for the team. A lot of melee fighter champions, they have no chance at, uh, like, the wave clear is a bit lacking, a bit worrying about their team comp, actually. Yeah, I don't really know if Mordecai's a bot lane is a thing, really. I mean, if anything, I'd rather have the Aurelia bot lane. But uh, old school Nautilus plus Mordecai's combo was pretty lethal before the rework. At least when he was viable in the bot lane, that is. But, uh, I mean, I feel like that's not a bad combination of champions if you're going to be playing into a Blitzcrank, because Blitz really can't hook either Mord or Nautilus, otherwise it's just a free engage. Sort of a situation like we had earlier tonight with the, or this morning, sorry, with the Tristana and... Uh, What's the support? Oh, it was it was a Blitzcrank versus Tristana plus something else that couldn't get hooked. Was it the Malphite? The Malphite yes, support. Yes, the Malphite. That was actually a good combo. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it definitely worked out. That Malphite coming in pretty clutch with a couple of late game team fight, uh, game changing ultimates. But uh, I'm quite keen to see what uh, Peanut could do on Pantheon. Pantheon being pretty much pick or ban at the stage, you kind of have to pick it if it's open. But uh, we first first Pantheon we've seen so far. Super OP, so very, very good early, late, and mid game. So, a champion to watch out for. Should be able to dictate the pace of the game, especially. Can be flexed in both mid lane and jungle, though. It's potentially top two. Something to keep in mind. Yeah, I mean, even though we are used to the rules that they played uh, earlier, it doesn't mean they are locked onto their lanes. They can always do a good old uh, quick lane swap if they feel like they don't uh, particularly like their matchup, since most of these uh, champions can actually just switch their rules. Obviously, yeah. Peanut needs to be in the jungle, but other than that, uh, it's still switchable. What are your thoughts on the Udia pick? I really don't see that many Udias. I think I've seen one in solo queue in the last, like, yeah, several months. I feel like there's one or two Udia South Africans. I know there was one. I think it was the for SSG, the jungler. I'm not sure. I think it was there, but it was a fairly um, good uh, Prem slash first, uh, first team that I remembered had a Udia one trick or main. 
that was like insanely good at the champion. I can't remember I, who it was. The only, only uh, idiot that I really knew from the local scene was Tiger Becklaw before you retired. I oh, know it was he definitely was like not Tiger. It, it was, nah, it, was, was a, yeah, it was definitely a jungler, and I remember that he it was a highly prioritized banned against him. So other than that, but I know he had a certain play comp. I know he was the uh, top uh, jungler, and then he would like just farm to late game and then split push anyways or something so like basically that. Basically, trick to G. Basically, yeah, I think it's basically like trick to G play style. I think. But uh, that uh, that that Javan skin looking like the disturbed album. Um. But in game, a little bit yikes. I don't know if I care for that skin. Maybe with a chrome or two. See if we get any invades coming through. But we will have the pauses. There has been a crash apparently. It was bad, man. I think uh, Bunny Pilot not making it through the lane screen. But he does. Oh, no, no, no. It was uh, Red Side that paused. The Mordekaiser. Abnormal. Yeah, I'm going to have to see his. Abnormal has been, ha has been having a lot of solid. Uh, games today on the carry. yeah on ADC with the Syndra and the Caitlyn I believe it was and um, I mean no no it was Kaisa I think the first game but anyways yeah that was um, we saw like very good CS the first and second game and a really good a consistent amount of damage so I'm looking again to see what he's going to be able to do with this Mordekaiser Almost uh, one of our candidates actually for, for player of the series, I believe. Are we allowed to give a player of the series out sort of thing? I think it's allowed. It's uh, it's pretty decent for me. But also, uh, by the way, I just wanted to quickly check through the... Um, if he wants OP.GG's to see something. And it seems like Abnormal Slime. That's actually his main, by the way. Mordekaiser is his main. He has 12... Okay, it's not a uh, same amount of games. He has 12 games on 75% win rate. <laughs> Main, by the way, <laughs> it's his most game. So I mean, it, it's it would be considered his main. But yeah, his last game was uh, was two days ago, and he went fifteen eight and had a triple kill with a fifty four percent win rate uh, KP. So I mean, it's something. Dude, I mean, like, uh, what dictates someone being like a main or a one check to an extent? I mean, well, having not just I think there's two. That's two different things, though. Being a one trick doesn't specifically mean it's some it's your main. I think. Uh, because no, fair you, enough. Yeah, because you can main something currently, but you can still be a one-trick. Like, I used to be a, a Tarek main, but I still one-trick Nami most of the time. I think I've dropped Tarek a little bit now. Um, but, like, in this case, I think maybe... I don't know what he was playing before. Maybe he was a main of something else, but at the moment, he Mordekaiser is his main. It's one of his main champions. Yeah, no, fair enough. But I mean, if you only have 12 games, does it really count as a main? Because I mean, I feel like you have to have at least like 40 plus. That's on the bare minimum side. Yeah. That is I mean, true. I feel I feel like that's sort of like you could uh, just randomly play 12 games of, of Cassidy and do well. And then consider it your main to an extent. Yeah, if I check at previous seasons, he has not played Mordekaiser before. So obviously this is new to him for this year. Well, to be fair, Mordekaiser was reworked somewhat recently. Yeah. So perhaps that's the... Explanation for that one. That's another, that's another conversation in itself, dude. What happens if you're like a one trick or a main and they rework your champion? Do you try and learn the new reworked version or do you find a new champion to play? I think it all depends. Uh, some people like champions for more than just their abilities, but obviously that plays a part. So I think it will all, uh, it will all come down to if you like the new champion, I guess. Oh, cheeky invade. I mean, they Nothing have a, new here, to be I honest. I think they have a pretty fairly good comp to do this, but they're splitting around a for some reason. I don't know why they would Flitz do this. Crank. Flash in the way, actually. Okay, the pilot. Ooh. Dredge line connection. A lot of damage. That's going to be the first blood coming through, actually. Uh, slightly off screen, Blitz Crank looking for that hook flash attempt. Unfortunately, not working out in his favor. So that will be the invade paying off quite nicely. Yeah, I, I believe. Mean that's the sort of learning, dude. Because peanut that happened to peanut in the in the first or second game of the previous series. Yep, and I mean, I was sitting there for a second because I was thinking, why why would Nautilus spittle from the group and go around? But I guess it worked out for them because he caught the Caitlyn off, and then they all could just uh, converge onto her. So I mean, it was all fine. And arguably, could have worked had he gone with the, the group as well and caught out perhaps the Blitz. Don't know. We'll yeah. never know, I guess. But uh, paying off nonetheless. It will be that Mordecai's a bot lane. And uh, all the support. Galio top with the running in the mid side. 
Uh, touching back of the Galio was buffed somewhat recently. So pretty decent mid lane especially now. As for top, I guess it's pretty decent to Teemo. As well as the Vega to be honest. So the Magic is a stack. Galio pickup should work quite nicely into these comps. Bot lane predictions, how do you see this lane going, dude? Uh, I have a feeling that they're probably going to get a bit harassed in the early game, but apparently not. Looks like they will be doing the harassment. Okay, no, let's scratch that. Uh, Mordekaiser's damage isn't that much early game. I don't think they can rely safely on trading with this. I think the best thing for him to do, and this is why I also was thinking that it wouldn't be that great this matchup, is oh. he's going to struggle a lot earlier. Deadly virus, Peanut with the first gang attempt. Last air blade, a lot of damage. A flash, four star does have the TP for the return though. Upside team mode, not really too hot. Um, yeah, just touching back on that that bot lane combination. I mean, Bunny Pilot plus Blitzcrack, they have the hook trap combo, which can be quite deadly, but honestly, I don't even think Mordecai is that good in the bot lane. I feel like he needs to be a solo lane and all. Pretty yeah. dependent on those levels and items. I 100% agree with you on that one. Uh, you can already see with the trading, like, he's really not good in the early game and he doesn't have anything to keep him safe. Oh, Peanut oh. looking for the invade. Yeah, this is this is dangerous, because you are a Pantheon sure, but you're versing an idiot who likes to take these early brawls if he can't get onto you. But uh, Camp not being a reset, Peanut just being a nuisance more than anything. You need to be careful versus a Blitzcrank. Beautiful grab, though. If I can turn Peanut super well, the Ignite not going to be enough, unfortunately. But here comes Inhuman Killer, sitting on that flash till the Hail of Blades earlier build. Nobody going to be going down, it seems. Yeah, and this is... Uh going to be very bad for him taking that much damage on the Mordekaiser. We already touched on the fact that he is uh, doesn't have anything to keep himself safe. Like for an example, having a Yasuo as an ADC works because he has a wind wall and he get, ha gets a shield up every few seconds just by running around. So that's, that's really good to have because it means you can safely walk up and take minions and trade without Return dying. Bank. Speaking Inhumane of dying. Inhumane can be flashing plus smizing the camp means that the camp will go over to Peanut but... Uh... He main survives with his life, it seems. Last air blade might make an attempt. He does ignite applied. The turtle form shield might just be enough to keep him alive. It will actually air blade just walking away from that one. Um, yeah, just touching back on that bot lane concept. I mean, Mordekaiser, for example, needs to be able to 1v1 one of their players. As a player who's now sort of shared experience bot lane as well as gold to an extent. Sort of not as nearly as strong as he should have been in these 1v1 situations because your support suddenly can't help you if you do go to the Shadow Realm. So you need to be a little bit more careful with who you actually decide to, to ult you. Yeah, definitely. Also took a Dark Harvest, so that's going to be something that needs to sort of uh, stack up and he needs to get to the late game. So, that's uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to look out for this bot lane and then they say, say that I think later on at the moment. Actually not doing too badly keeping up with CS, still pretty even with the Caitlyn, so that's pretty impressive. Well, that's a bit of fancy feet coming through. Air blade, lots of damage. Does get the solar kill, so that mid lane pressure from Peanut working out quite nicely. Definitely in uh, two zero now on Irelia. Really, huh? It's going to be uh, that's going to be a bit harsh to deal with later on if the if last air blade is going to take this lead to the late game. And I mean, it's pretty good to see because it's. I felt like maybe the Echo, but other than that, he's been like fairly just keeping his own. The Syndra game, he was just sort of uh, keeping his own, getting the scale. And this game, it seems like he's ready to carry, maybe. Do you see that Peanut so. doesn't really have kills of his own yet? So we'll have to see. But he does have he double the Udia CS because he was playing Super Harass slash like Invade and B as big of a nuisance as possible. Oh, definitely. That's clearing the enemy red side and your own, plus your own blue. That's definitely going to. Give him Absolutely. a really good back to base. I need to note about the Galio in comparison to the previous like post. Like like the Galio that we we all knew and loved from being full AP Galio was uh, kind of nerfed and then buffed again. They made it so you can no longer flash during the taunt animation, which is pretty massive to be honest. Yeah, I don't I don't like that change at all. Pretty much put me off from playing Galio as a support at least. Yeah, they they got it. That was the Galio support pretty much dead because that was the whole reason you'd play it to an extent. But uh, yeah, the one thing that is still a problem for me that I'm going to pull some red lights on with some trades. I'm not going to do much yeah. unless we did sp speak about the Mordekaiser not being so strong yet. But uh, I'm a bit worried about the late game. If, if this game stalls out long enough, 
how will they be able to clear waves and consistently like fight if there's a fight mid and they need to like you know duel it out it's, it's you know it's an oh. elongated fight and not oh that's good Beautiful hook coming through, unfortunately, we'll only get the flash and heal out of Mordecai's no death just yet, so abnormal. Needs to be a little bit careful when his uh, support goes back to base. Yeah, so as I was saying, if the enemy team decides to have uh, a bit more drawn out long fights, you know, don't take fights uh, straight on, don't face check brushes, stuff like that. If they just keep lane fights, um, it feels like that's something that they will struggle to do. They're going to have to look to all in and basically catch them off and kill them. Where the enemy team uh, from Wonderboom is going to look at uh, just playing it safe, just play back. Caitlyn doing like a front to back team fight with CCing uh, like from the Vigar and the team are providing shrooms. Yeah. You know, it's just stay away from the, from, the, from the ranged for melee people. We are playing into a Vega team, which do have a tendency to scale quite nicely. Emphasis on the, the Vega, the later the game goes, the stronger he becomes. So, sort of a ticking time bump to an extent. They do have a Galio on the other hand, which is uh, very, very good into AP based champions. Do you feel like Udia should be applying pressure towards getting the Caitlyn ahead, seeing as he is really the only main AD source for the team? I definitely think that would be a good thing to do. We already see them. Uh, you mean, first of all, the Mordekaiser are struggling, and it seems like the Caitlyn is having a good time, and as we say that, he is there. Did not pull the trigger. I think as soon as they place the ward there, maybe grab him immediately. Wasted some time. Yeah. On the other hand, Galio tends to be better off mid lane opposed to top because he has that semi global ultimate range, which sort of allows to apply more pressure. If he's top lane, he can only really ulti to jungle or mid lane if he walks down, but no way of really getting bottom outside of burning his own TP, which is uh, kind of unnecessary. Uh, is, our, is our time synced up, by the way? Uh, 8 45, 46. Okay, that's fine. Seven. So first check of the map is going to be the Infernal Peanut looking to play for that currently. Red team picking up that objective quite freely, no contested, really just the movement to make sure that it is covered. Galio sort of hovering as well in case he is needed for that team fight seeing as the wave has been shoved out already. A little bit of a late Teemo missing goal coming through unfortunately. Yeah, so that's first infernal over to um, Paul Rus, and also I'm calling it right now a very early um, Rift Herald yeah. as well by Peanut. Yeah, I would like to see something like that just to get the game snowballing because I mean that's exactly what they want to be doing against this blue side car. But also it's just been a recurring theme. I'm pretty sure if I remember correctly both the previous games today uh, when they went 2-0, I believe Peanut did pick up Rift Herald immediately and it, while I say that he is going to the top side so he is going to ult it on a Teemo. Oh, unfortunately not going to be able to chain CC. Interesting flash going through from Peanut. Don't know if he's going to be able to catch this. He does actually. Nicely done. Uh, luckily the spear connected which slowed him. Yeah, slow spears. I mean, the spear slows apparently. Slow spears. <laughs> or oh. flash. Oh, dredge line already used. Aftershock. Gonna keep it a little bit tanky. Mordecai at this point level uh, six, seven. So has the ultimate available if he does decide to go for it. Yeah, in terms of CS lead, uh, oh, Galio. Cheeky hook. That's good. For that. Let's crank though. Gonna be going to the Shadow Realm, so it's Eddie Carry versus Eddie Carry. Abnormal last bar gonna be this. He does win the 1v1, but he's so low. Dredge line reconnection, the great Fromp getting the support or combat win as well. So that's both red side bot laners taking that 1v1's uh, crown. That's uh, looking overall at the map, but it just seems like everyone is pulling a lead so far. I mean, it's uh, it, the Aurelia. Pretty big CS lead over the Vigor. Um, now, oh, getting an ult from the Galio actually for safety net. Um, Galio and I'm helping. A little bit deep, there's no follow up from Pinar unfortunately. Doesn't seem like he's needed as PRG gets the kill there. Meanwhile, bot side, that's gonna be a double into the return. So that's already four members dead and that may just be the fifth. It is Caitlyn securing herself for another one. Thanks to that uh, ace in the hole. He does.
blue. Red side starting to pull ahead in terms of gold as well as uh, objectives. Griffchild may be the next one to go for. Nice little rotation coming through so far from the Galio. Has TP to rejoin topside. Versus the Teemo is opted to go for that Ignite. What are your thoughts on that, dude? Ignite on Teemo top in this matchup? I mean, I don't know if Teemo is the best split pusher in the world. Yes, he has a safety for himself to if someone tries to pick him off in a side lane. So, I don't know, maybe he does try to, to kill him in the side lane. Not that it worked out well. I mean, you're asking me, well, we're already halfway through the, to, to the landing phase, so it's almost self-explanatory. The Ignite wasn't a good pick for him. Uh, because after at this stage, he's not going to use the Ignite that much anymore. He's going to need the TP. So, in short, yes, the Ignite is bad now, but it could have been really great if he used it more aggressively in lane. I don't know. Personally, I feel like the Ignite, there was no real point where Teemo could solo kill the Galio. Oh, hold that thought, though. Inhuman, turtle form. Stun is cheeky, but Airblade, last little attack, can be enough to take him out. Here comes that uh, Death Charge into the Abnormal Bank. And uh, Blitzcrank. Oh. Trap gonna be able to save him actually beautifully played. Looking to try and walk this one up, but the dredge line says no thanks, friend. You're coming back to me. Leaves it for the uh missed attempts. Here comes Peanut. We're looking to try and get a party. Does go down to the turret, so that is a bit of a yikes play coming through. Meanwhile, while they play with their food in the in the river, Peanut will be dying to the tower. Um I think this guy trying to flash outside of the range for that uh, Mordecai's uh, ultimate. You can see the flash ping being uh, issued by the, the team once the chat drops. Oh, sorry, while the, um, once the, the replay is dropped. So, Mordecai's a uh, very, very clutch uh, Shadow Realm. Yeah, it's an in interesting thing to notice that um, also the Galio does have teleport and his ultimate. So that would mean that. At most times, oh, looking for the dive. Yeah, blame. There it is. Might die him. Nope, oh, there it is. Looking for the dive, more likely. Kappa. I mean, that was a shutdown onto the Udi. Not that the Udi is having a really great time, only finishing his jungling item now. But yeah, as I was saying, the Udi will have a lot of uh, global presence with that ultimate and the TP. Gotta say, I'm fine playing the, the Blitzcrank quite well so far. Generally, the Blitzcranks uh, are kind of uh, shifty, kind of questionable, but uh, I think a pretty good, decent job so far. Big T fight, but a breakout. Here comes Panting the rotation back in. Have normal. Red side picking himself up two kills, a, a crank, and it's AD carry. Really nice communication there to turn the team fight, having the uh, Galio teleport in, using that TP to keep his team safe, plus getting the kill, and now they'll most likely be able to actually get the tower as well. So, not only just the lives of his teammates he rescued, but most probably got himself another objective. Kind of feels like, despite Galio playing the map and not being top very often, he's uh, still ahead of CS, which doesn't really make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, Timo should be equal at least at this stage, and is almost, but still, I mean, the Galio is at the moment running mid and uh, facing the Fygon. I mean, he's still not, still not catching up in farm, so that's unfortunate. So they put him really at the top to sort of just uh, dance, does hit the stream, need to be careful with that one. But like, uh, Irelia, or the Teemo, not maybe much kill pressure on the uh, Galio, but Irelia on the other hand, if she misplays into a couple of streams, can quite easily go down to that uh, surprising amount of damage. Pantheon does get through the Vega cage, and that's the, the free kill for Galio. Let's crank that. Oh, cannon minion. Oh, that uh, minion just saved the Galio from being hooked. Arguable. You might to clear wave air blade. Looking for the dive though, misses the W crescendo as well. Requiem and uh, the tick, the tuck, the DPS. Not gonna be enough actually. Blue side ping, ignite not there, but uh, meanwhile boss side trying to hook a little bit early. Peanut. Yrg, taunt. Um, Mordekaiser? Oh, the okay. vulnerability for Peanut comes through just in time so he doesn't take more tower damage. Abnormal almost trolling his own team by walking on the Caitlyn trap. Finds the Shroom. Shield gonna be enough to keep him alive. Police sign. Uh, 
and here it is. The um, okay, not not early, so it's not gonna be taken before the plates dropped. So that's unfortunate, but uh, nonetheless, we do see Peanut actually getting the Rift Herald either way. So that's going to be another objective for them. Now they have the Infernal, the Ocean, and the Rift Herald. So overall, um, PRG looking really, really good with uh, objective control. Oh, a little bit of damage. Uh, Big still trying to work towards that scale. Not uh, like too hard just yet. Uh, can we see his stacks? Cat's currently in the way. By the way, I also want to point out that I feel like they are using their, their comp very well. So I mentioned before that they're going to have to look at all inning and making sure that they dive and almost just all in on, on the comp whenever they can. And uh, we saw that with, there with Peanut. He ulted and you see the Galia ult on top of it. Everyone following up, just making sure that whenever one person goes in, all of them go in. And I think that's the important part. They should all just commit to a fight whenever the one person commits. Let's crank early himself for that really a flash. Cheeky hook and a turret. Like I said, so far, uh, Fire doing pretty decently. Oh, oh, oh hang on. Be nice. <laughs> Lucky the hook does not connect. Oh, there it is actually. Fire yet again. Big uh, dredge line plus humble trespass. Great from Abnormal. Still sitting on the Mordecai's ulti. Galio gets a ton of the team and that should result in a free kill. Oh, Irelia, PRG, cheeky fadeaway, last air blade. I don't know if that's what you want to be doing, guys. You're going for a little bit of a deadly dive. Stopwatch coming in very clutch, actually. Galio. You're going to be on the map soon. A minute to go. If you look at the map, you can see a lot of red wards there from PRG side. They're actually investing a lot of vision control. You can see, like, what, four, four, five, actually, all five control wards are out, out, actually, at the moment, and even normal wards. So, very good props here to PRG, making sure there's a ward coverage all over the map. That's crank actually going to take one of the control wards out, and they're going to get that top tower. So, I mean, PRG is actually playing fairly well this game. Interesting enough to see that Peanut is. Okay, so he did make a good amount of difference in this game by ganking a lot, but uh, considering he's the one with the only with no kills in the game, and he's the diamond player. Yeah, as well as the Pantheon. Pantheon kind of wants to snowball to an extent. But uh, I have noticed that he's been leaving kills for his team fairly often. Couple of questionable dives in my opinion. I feel like it's a little bit too hard. Has the rift held now? Is this the in-game time? Uh, 1953. Oh, I'm at 20, 21. Oh, it's not 21, sorry. 23, 4. I'm gonna pause at 10. Okay. What, 23, 10? No, no, 20, 10. Uh, okay. Ready? Camera okay, ready? 3, 2, 1. Drake, uh, now on the siege, blue side side to rotate, but I don't know if they can contest us at this point. They're so far done. It really with a beautiful engage. Does unfortunately end up just getting deleted. Virus has other plans for her. Let's crank trying to be as annoying as possible. Finds the uh, Nautilus. Three drinks, completely different. Mountain, ocean, and fire. The three nations. Yeah, and uh, the Rift Riddle has not been used yet. It is inter uh, interesting to know. It's going to time out soon, I think, and you can see that he is in the bot lane here. Just have to watch out not to spawn it. Yeah, there is a lot of CC. He can't afford to die here. The Pantheon cannot afford to die in this situation. Putting in that Rift Herald. But uh, from Prey to Predator, nice little pick him through Blitzcrank and be the first one down. And uh, Inhumane cannot run any further than that. He's about to hit that max distance as uh, Mordekaiser does end up getting the, the finish off for the kill, the triple kill actually. Hashtag Mordekaiser mains. Yeah, and it uh, looks like our discussion about mains was uh, pretty valid. Looks like he does oh. know what he's doing on the champion. Deadly virus though, on the other hand. Pretty one for one. Anyway. I don't think the team I pick particularly work in this game, unfortunately. And this is interesting. It seems like the comp has been working out pretty well for them. I mean, the whole fact that they don't have any um range champions or 
wave clear, it just seems like it's not a problem. They're just all in on everyone they can find, kill them, and uh, continue sieging. Yeah, it kind, of, it kind of feels like the, the, the draft for the uh, side of IBC is uh, a little bit of a miss. I feel like their comp is too much, let's get picks, but at the same time, let's split push, which doesn't really work. They've got Teemo, which doesn't really want to group. He likes to sit side lane and apply pressure, but at the same time, they have a Blitzcrank, which wants to get picks for the team. They're kind of two heads butting against each other versus the, the easy to pull off uh, hard engage CC comp from the side of uh, PRG. This stage, it seems like they're just making sure that they have a priority in all of the lanes so they can maybe try and look for this Baron, maybe clear out some vision and then just sit for them. You don't even have to start the Baron, I believe, because I mean, with the comp they have, if anyone face checks it, they're 100% dead. Yeah, they just want to fight, fight, fight. Speaking um, of, there is vision that he's standing on a ward. Mordecai's up. Looks for the Yoink. Bunny Pilot says, No, friend, I've got my net ready. Trap place, there's a lot of damage, plus the beautiful extra 100 range applied. So Blitzcrank getting that pick, just the tip, and uh, Peanut trying to walk away from this one. Can't afford a dice, because he doesn't have the rift anymore, but uh, doesn't necessarily need to. I don't think Baron particularly on the table anymore, thanks to that uh, cheeky AD carry hook. I mean, I feel like that was a, a misplay of the comp. I was just pointing out that they need to maybe just stack a brush, clear out all vision, and there's still a lot of vision, so you, you can't Ooh. really wait for them. Oh, that's crack cheap. Let's trap, though, fortunately. Inhumane killer finish of the kill. So once again, the plus crank just coming in so clutch. Seems like his hooks are on point today. Plus crank is basically just keeping the foot in the, in the door still for this team. I mean, it's... Uh, it's been looking pretty doomed, but every time he gets one of these picks, it's just one step closer to them actually getting back into the game. I think he's building a crucible. Oh, yeah, he's got the complete crucible. I mean, sure, they got a lot of CC and stuff, but I honestly don't think that's worth it on Blitzcrank. I feel like, for example, Vayne should just... Not Vayne, sorry. Uh, Kate should opt to go for the QSS. Crucible on Blitzcrank just means you're way too squishy for that comp, and with your own comp, you need something, some sort of frontline slash beefy tanky. Maybe the locker that was just buffed could be quite worthwhile. But uh, I think he's gonna definitely lack in the tank stats. That is definitely something to consider since they don't really have a lot of tanks. It actually seems like the Udia has decided to change up his build. He has the Blood Razor for attack speed, but did opt in to go Spectre's Cowl, so is gonna go some magic resist after that item. So they don't really have any other tanks seeing that Teemo is building full AP. So yeah, you're definitely right when he's saying that uh, they are going to lack in some tank stats. Oh. I'm starting up the Baron. Baron underway. Will we see the blue side contest? They are pretty far out with zero vision control. Baron currently sitting at 5,000 health. Inhuman killer trying to get close. A little bit of a cheeky hook attempt. So they haven't started the, the fight, but uh, Inhuman hitting it. Wait for the Baron at this point as Peanut Ops to just finish it. The rest of the team still carrying on the chase. That's going to be two members dead for the trader for one. Double kill now. It rarely am picking up that one. And uh, Abnormal with a flash and gets the yoink into the boink, and that's going to be the free kill on a Vega. And with that, I mean, only Udia is left, and he won't be able to defend, so they're going to probably have to... They are going to probably take a lot with this Baron at the moment. Siege continuing now, potentially pick up the hit him at least. But, uh... I'm looking too good. I honestly feel like uh, the the IBC need to reapproach the draft for the second game, as I feel like that may have been the sort of like the, the main issue with the comp and uh, with, with the game rather. I feel like uh, it's not necessarily playing poorly, but rather that the comp not quite working out according to plan. I think they can definitely keep the Blitzcrank. The Blitzcrank seems pretty decent. In I think the Caitlyn Blitz wasn't too much of a problem. Um, I think the probably problem lies more with the top lane especially and maybe the jungle and mid laner. Mid laner maybe could still maybe work with a different comp. Oh, the Galio. Hero's entrance. The knockup's gonna be into the taunt. That's a big knock. Or well, lockdown while the Kaylin in a very good position of just fire off auto attack. She's hitting crits plus the, the stream's doing some work. But uh, I don't know if she's gonna be able to clean this one up unfortunately. Op opting to, to try and play it through the, the wall. I just got to comment on the fact that uh, Caitlyn has opted to go for the completed... Uh, what's, what's the item called now? 
the completed motor reminder, which is the upgraded executioner's calling. I don't particularly know if that's necessary. What is what does she need the the uh, the grievous for? Yeah, when I'm looking at the comp, I don't see a lot of a uh, lot of necess necess necessity for it actually. I mean, Water Kaiser gets just pure shields mostly off of his uh, abilities. Yes, yeah, so, uh, I mean he does have a little bit of heal, but still, like I feel like it's definitely way too much of a gold sink. Should have just gone for the. Uh, just going, crit. yeah, just going crit will, will do enough damage, in my opinion. Yeah, so kind of sinking a little gold into that, but uh, honorable mention to the 16 for 4 Mordecai's who had just fallen. Rest in peace. And here, but the bot is almost down, but not quite. Blitzcrank just powering up the, the fist for the next uh, game changing hook. I Blitzcrank. Best Blitzcrank skin, Sinister? Uh, definitely Bolt Over Customs. Not the not the new uh, uh, the bewitching I don't know what it's actually called but the the Halloween Blitzcrank that's coming out it looks like a cauldron. I've I've always been a big fan of uh, Poltover Customs. That's the 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 one that looks like a car, right? Yeah. Wee wee wee. Wee wee. Yep, I've got that one as well. Picked it up somewhat recently. Peanuts. The hook the homing missiles. Doesn't matter how many times you block that you will go down in this case. So beautiful pick. Uh, Honestly, unnecessary play from Peanuts. Yeah, and I mean, it's the Blitzcrank again coming up clutch, and this is exactly why I'm saying that this is something they probably want to try and keep in this comp. If they can ha build a comp around this type of thing that will really punish people for getting picked off, then I definitely think that's something that they can work around next game. Oh, Airblade. Pick off the pick, the hook's gonna be there. That's not something you want, though. The support is getting a free end, uh, free... Engages the fight. Seems like he doesn't want to fight back. They're already using that depth charge. And see, this is the yeah. type of fighting that I've told you that they would be oh. better at. But looks Shadow like Warcraft has other plans. Doesn't care. There's a turret there. He's looking for the boy. Caitlyn's stuck. Can, doesn't realize he can't leave the Shadow Realm. Uh, although, QSS will actually take you out instantly. So something that uh, Caitlyn potentially could have picked up instead of that uh, mortal reminder. The QSS. Man, that seems like they're gonna probably take a inhibitor tile off of that. Death timers are only Udi are only up in eight seconds. The rest of the people spawning a bit in a while. Maybe mid inhibitor as well. KD being exactly twenty to forty. Sixty K gold. Whoop. That's a big gold deed. <laughs> Trick DG doing the best he can to try to clear her away. Great, uh, from find himself a cheeky present from Timo from the, from the death realm. Should be in theory quite easy to close on at this point. They've got the Palio Super Minions, just don't get picked off again. We saw that uh, Peanut plus uh, one or two other members just after that getting picked out, which sort of slowed the game down. Lost in the momentum that they had to close this match out, but still definitely in favor of the side of uh, PRG. Yeah, I think at this stage we can start playing Peanut Roulette. Will he take uh, an hip, uh, uh, Herald at a certain time? How many dragons oh. will he take? Oh. Will he get picked off by Blitz Rank hooks? It's uh, it's all it's all Peanut Roulette, dude. Blitz got an extra hundred range on his hook, so I feel like he needed an extra hundred and five to land that one. Just short of uh, grabbing on a Peanut. He lives to tell another tale. Team will do the best he can to just clear the, 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 the place the streams in preparation for the next team fight. Let's run that mid and hip. Uh, Timo had doesn't even have a complete full item. He's uh, started a Nashes. Okay, wait, he does have a Nashes. Never mind. Uh, but that's not really going to help him for these streams. I mean, you need damage that's uh, ticking. Like, you need to have the. Oh, Caitlyn. Funny pilot once again. No QSS in sight. Abnormal. Inhibitor now down. Hang on, actually, Kayla's still alive. I've known might just be the one that dies this time. Just surviving. Poison not quite enough as uh, Gallia's next one down. Peanut picking up the kill one to Inhumane. So that's Jungler taking out Jungler. And uh, Nexus turret's still up. But uh, the top lane turret and wave starting to crash now means that it should be all oh, free hook, actually. And Blade. See below, but no cigar once again. That's two members. That's the finally the ready to go down, actually. But the hunt is on the flash marker. Blitz crack, lots of work, still has the hook. There it is, come back. Man, 
this track. Uh, KDA doesn't look nearly as well as he's been playing. No, definitely. Um, but I mean, at this stage, it's probably just stalling. I mean, that goal re lead is pretty massive. If you look at the items that everyone has, I mean, Mordekaiser is sitting on three AD AP items and two magic resist items. Like, they, they are pretty stacked in terms of uh, how far ahead they are this game. I think it almost doesn't matter how many times they get pulled by Blitzcrank or how many times they get caught off. What's the chances of them actually not only picking someone off, but taking away Baron and also clearing literally all of their uh, towers because at the moment they have nine towers to zero towers. So it's a very Plus far four cry. Yeah. Plus make that five. Yeah, so that's a massive far cry from actually being close to taking this game back. Blue side rotating towards the Baron objectives, trying to get vision control, see if they're on it. Apparently they're not, as they do find out. There we go, so we, <laughs> that's two Infernals, two Earths, and one Ocean, and a Baron. So, oh, we don't know yet. Um, very, very likely though, seeing as Udo has just base to deal with that bot wave. Oh, there's too much wave in the, I mean, they just take too long to clear those. Something to keep in mind is that if they, oh, hang on, Blitz getting yoinked through the wall? What? Pops the Crucible in South hoping for that level to actually move the speed. Baron now secured red team. That's going to be the uh, Pantheon picking it up. What I was going to say is we got to be careful because you have been funneling gold into the base of blue side this entire time. That means Vegas be getting free stacks, free gold, and uh, extra AP the later the game goes. Yeah, but also like I touched on before, this uh, they're building a lot of magic resist. N Nautilus is already on uh, a complete magic resist item plus actually oh. two. And I mean, that's tanky boys. Oh, it's tanky boys? What? That's going to be Mordekaiser, the first one down at last Airblade, making up for an inhumane killer now down. The baby cage lock and plays in place, and uh, the hook into it as well. No sign of the QCS. There's Resurrection Guardian Angel now kicked in. Bunny Pilot picking the kill onto the support. The first one now down, and uh, Bunny Pilot quite easily picking up that kill. Maybe, maybe they have too many tanks on the team, and they're struggling to actually deal damage here. And the main damage dealer was killed very early. Oh. Blitz missing his first hook, but the DPS not gonna be there either, actually. Red team comp actually very struggling. That all comes down to not having the siege slash minion clearing potential on these champions. They have I to feel like it. go for it. Yeah, they have to force fights, kill them, and then take the base. It's almost like they, they can't force, they can't just sit around and just wait to try and just push in waves. They need to get all three inhibitors to either do that or just force a fight and win the game. Yeah, they have Baron. There's no real reason to force it. I mean, just go for the split, get all the waves crashing in, and they just won't be able to deal with the minions plus the players. They don't have particularly that much wave clear. So play it slow steady, win the race and get the base. Don't force and sort of just allow Vega to free stack up. He's level 16 and he's uh, starting to get towards that, uh, that critical point. Yeah, I mean, top and bottom inhibitor has been respawning now, so... Uh, they will need to get those down again. Mid inhibitor will probably not be too far off as well. Yeah, I'm picking up blue. Top uh, inhibitor now on the siege bottom just respawning. There won't be much left on that uh, Baron buff, unfortunately. Probably about five or so seconds, so just seeing if they can pick up the free objectives quickly, or it does drop off. Alright, so two tempers down, third one respawning in just a moment, middle. There it is, looking to play for that, so that's gonna be the, the final guaranteed for the next three to four minutes at least. Vega questionable ultimate this early in the fight. That's gonna be him bonked. That's a massive uh, mistake coming through from the side of Blue. That most likely will be the game of this play. That's gonna be the support Blitzcrank dead hero's entrance. Bonk from afar. Abnormal picking the kill on a Caitlyn. Double kill now. Mordecai is coming in big. And uh, I believe that will be it. The game number one done and dusted. PRG taking the first match of the best of three. I mean, uh, that's a, that was a fairly long game considering the fact that they were so far ahead in gold. But at the end of the day, PRG does uh, take the win for themselves, so one for zero, and uh, we're going to have game two soon. And Dorian's rings for days for really it seems.
Check the damage chance in just a moment, guys. The Caitlyn doing a fair amount of work despite the interesting decision in builds. As well as the Mordekaiser doing pretty well, plus the Galio. Really, not really featuring too hard this game, and I uh, feel like uh, the, the Pantheon sort of focusing on being more of a nuisance than anything this game. But uh, sinister thoughts? For me, I feel like they had a good idea with their comp, but they, it lacked one main problem for the side of PRG, and it was with these late game sieging and, and pushing, it seems like they either need to all have a plan thought out, like, okay, we're going to go in and get, let, let, just all in, let the Pantheon engage, he's in any way not doing the main damage in the team, so let him engage, let him put up his in, in vulnerability, and then just have everyone follow up, have the Nautilus follow up on top of him, uh, taunt everyone and have the Irelia and Mordecai so just go, go, go. Like, you have to kill people and take towers. Otherwise, play it slow. You can't play in between. That's where they had a lot of problems where they got caught off. Uh, they, they played a little bit safe and then they tried to sort of push and then get poked down by the Caitlyn and then they'll die, you know? So it either needs to be all or nothing. They need to stand back and just let the wave do the thing and not get caught off or they need to all in and just kill everyone. And if they want to pull that, this comp off again, that's what they need to do, in my opinion. 100%, guys. Otherwise, we'll see you for game number two of the best of the PRG versus IBC in, uh, in a couple of minutes, guys. So get the little coffee, get the popcorn, and we'll see you shortly. Pan Dragon, though. Perhaps reacting against the Drake. That is not what you can do when your drag or your jungler is not there. Garen dying just before that. Very risky fight or dragon attempt in the first place. This may just be the throw as Red Side is slowly trying to claw the way back in, but Lycan Wraith is going to be taken out by Pike Assassinated, and uh, that's going to be that gold value share. Not able to get... Oh, that's going to cost you. Lunica on the other hand here for the counter. Bumpkin Boy in a little bit of trouble. Super low. The cheeky, cheeky turn back, but Echo... Wait, Berserk? There it is. Realizes, hang on, Karzix is uh, not where I thought you'd be. Let's pick up the kill. Hold on my head, misposition. Buff, but uh, oh, flash. We know mid side hole in my head. A lot of damage. They're not gonna be applied. The barrier is gonna be burned very early. But Berserk finding himself in an awkward situation. The science now applied as he casts his way towards those turrets. Flashing away beautifully played, actually. So no death is gonna be coming through just yet. It could be. It's also um, Kung Fu Panda, I believe. That's also the, oh, right, the, turtle. Right, right, right. the turtle is called Mr. Oh. Fever, I believe. Beautiful flash, depth charge going to be there. Unfortunately, not going to be able to land the burn skip, but it should be enough ignites. Invested on the heal a little bit late, so won't be able to get much out of, out of that. But it's it for the double. Ops to back off flash available for the re attempt. The flash there is Bumpkin Boy just surviving, dropping the smite for a little bit of health back. A jacked up stuff, holding my head, a bird of trouble. No, no, no. Rift Code now secured, Blue Team securing that, so that's going to be Jack picking them up, plus the Syndra kill not looking too good, as they do neutralize that 4-4. Four four. Four, so, he can still make a choice, I guess. Lycan, though. Malphite gets the two-man lockdown, that's the first member down, dead Wraith. Tiny Gamer not interested in even trying to kite that one out, just ops to head for the kills of the Flash Invested, but Berserk, though, it does end up resulting in uh, himself dying, thanks to that hole in my head finish off, but uh, Garen picking up. Oh, the Malphite instead of the Tristan is an interesting decision. I feel like there's a lot more gold sitting on the Tristana's head, and perhaps a misclick as they were very close to each other, but a uh, cheeky rotation or overstay from the side of red. I mean, I mean, shutdown is a shutdown, and that's going to be some good gold over to the with the with the farm. He's at the moment a bit behind, so maybe it would be worth it to try and get pick up more farm or the late game. He can maybe just sit in the side lane and then Ooh, join team fights. So Rumble trash bosh plus the dredge line could be enough for the late heal. Not gonna be able to keep him alive. Tiny game of dropping the ball a little bit there, but uh Sona yet again getting caught out. Uh, having a bit of a rough time at this stage. Whoa. Interesting decision by Mordekaiser. That worked out very, very, very nicely. So now Rift Herald secured for the side of Blue takes away any opportunity for a steal. I can respect that decision. Gank post 6 due to the nature of the ultimate. So, looks like bot side pen dragon. The flash gonna be the Sona only able to lock down the support. Unfortunately, Tiny Gamer now done for it, losing half his stacks. And the uh, SAB in a little bit of trouble as well. The second one not gonna be there. The flash will be enough to keep him alive just before Mott finishes him off. Thanks to the. With Sona missing her ult and then first trying to go in for the second engage without ult, but then the Vi ulting the wrong person. So, a lot of misplays here from. Uh... In Bongeni High School. 
We're gonna misplace first beautiful flash. Just gonna be able to finish off Lucian with that early investment, giving him a little bit of time to sort of just watch uh, and uh, keep the middle lane away from the rest of the fight as the jacked up stuff is able to take out the counter, but hole in my head is now dead. Not for two for one, but uh, the fight doesn't end there. Demacia. Avail or not available actually as he's really useless to so try to just put his way to victory for this one but Sonya for the save jacked up stuff not gonna be enough this pumpkin boy flashes in for the final hit but uh wait it out if they do face check then we do so actually Mr. Poe is a bit low and they are going to re back it's actually a bit risky I mean oh speaking of risky just a couple of members Jungler on taking to the Shadow Realm with the QSS not gonna keep him alive but Mr. Poe's ultimate now down no smite available from the side of uh yeah, that is the, oh, you also no, want yeah, kind no, of no, you, you look, you look for low variance hooks in the sense that it's almost impossible unless they yeah. burn a summoner to, to oh. Zadok does That's get the solo kill. kill. Lenin seems support sexy B. He's very, very comfortable in his thrash. But Zadok on the top side does get the disdain, lands the fear beyond death, but it looks like Jazazm is going to be consumed, popping the ultimate, unfortunately. The fight on the side of GG so far, Red Panda with the 1v4, but Thresh is taking, leaves it properly away as he does dash back in, being ready, taking out the top, still got the Guardian Angel, but GG must not able to break that down, so he'll be respawning in a few seconds, Man Kicks, Super Low, does pick it up, so that's three members of life versus the two from the trade, needs to be careful, Gorilla very aggressive, both being dropped pretty hard. Yeah. We're trying to do the best they can to try and uh, keep that turret alive. Beautiful engagement from Pendragon, able to finish it off as he does pick up the kill on the Draven. So that's going to be the second death on a cash out, but uh, SAB now stuck between a pike and a hard place. Beautiful crescendo, unfortunately, not going to be enough as the turret does drop an SAB. Yeah, that is the. Oh, you no, 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 no. You, look, you look for low variance hooks in the sense that it's almost impossible unless they burn a summoner to. to oh. Zadok? Does get the solo kill. Lenin seems support sexy B. He's very, very comfortable in his thrash. Zanak on the top side does get the disdain. Lands the fear beyond death. That's pretty good. That's fair enough for them. And what will they do with it though? Looks like they are. Don't going need to, to take a team fight. Just drive the minions, but it looks like they have other plans. And Moss, beautiful two man lockdown hanger. That's the second jump coming through as uh, the Sanja bites the dust and uh, Red Side Snowball continues, Baron in hand. Yeah. What's up guys, welcome back to game number three, or oh, oh, sorry, game number two of the best of the uh, three. IBC, PRG, High School Esports League, VS Gaming, Telcom. Myself, uh, Sheepy as well, Sinister Smiley on the cast tonight. Sinister, takes away for the pick and burn phase, dude. Rightio, so straight off the bat, I'm a bit confused why PRG is banning Ivan. Um, but other than that, we actually see the Kha'Zix and the Kane getting banned out. So it just seems like we just won't see Peanuts on those junglers uh, during this tournament. And it just seems like it's going to ban out every single game. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's understandable. It's his main pick and anything. But it just seems like no teams have counter picks prepared or a way to deal with it. So they're just apparently just not going to let it happen. And, um, but yeah, other than that, he's been picking a different jungler every, every single time, even though it's not been banned. So that's also an interesting thing to note. He's changing it up and experimenting almost internally in the team and making sure that he, he has some different picks that he's basically already practiced and that all the teams know, even though they ban him, he's not going to like pick the same thing every time and every game, you know, he's going to mix it, mix it up himself a bit. Would you say that he's uh, not really trying to use full capabilities at this point? Sort of saving that for DT, perhaps, sort of picking whatever he feels like picking. I mean, definitely, it, it could be that. But I think it also, it's it's good not showing your complete hand. Like, for example, if he plays Lee Sin every game, right? He, he played a very good Lee Sin. But if he plays Lee Sin every game, then who says they're not just going to ban him a, th a third, put a third ban on his Lee Sin? And then that's out. Maybe he th likes his Lee Sin and he wants to maybe stop playing it. So people think he's not going to play it. And then tomorrow, people are going to be scratching their heads, be like, he played Lee Sin, he played... Of, you know pantheon why do we Classic. ban yeah we, why do we actually ban now you know he's got so many th extra things he's going to play so that's also putting a lot of those thoughts in team's head and i think that's pretty good so we have the bot lane locking already for the side of bully they've got the not the support most likely ash ad carry potentially could be the comet or the uh, standard ash build Versus the Yasuo Jin. So sort of by, by picking the Yasuo and the Jin, you tell us that it's not going to be a Yasuo bot lane. It will basically guarantee Yasuo mid or top. 
So taking away a little bit from the flex pick, but the gin as a counter to the ash, not too bad. And uh, most likely should see a support pick, seeing as the Nautilus was drafted, but it actually will be the jungle Evelyn. Please don't let it be lane Evelyn. <laughs> I don't know. I, I doubt that would be it. I don't I don't think that would be a very good idea. Um, I've only ever seen lane Evelyn once, and that's when they first released her. Yeah, I mean, it's looking pretty good so far. They're actually going fairly standard. We're not seeing too much of anything weird. I mean, the Nash's top lane might be something that's a bit hit or miss. If he doesn't get his farm up, it might be a bit of a problem. I mean, he can still go full tank. But other than that, I think I in this specific game, I think teams won't know how to deal with the Evelyn. So I'm actually pretty happy with the Evelyn uh, jungle pick, which I'm most likely going to believe it's jungle. I don't think he's going to take Jin jungle. But I mean, I would rather have a Jin top than Jin jungle. That's for sure. Definitely. And I mean, that's a Syndra ban, which I think is a pretty, pretty good ban. It's good to see they're not completely trolling with just the Ivan band. So it's uh the rest of the bands do seem very decent, especially the Blitzcrank. They hundred percent had a problem with the Blitzcrank. But I mean to be fair, it's most likely gonna be that not with support, so why uh that was first rotation, never mind, never mind. Yeah, and I mean well, Syndra yeah, is always pretty good for uh you know, banning for mid lane and bot lane. I mean, yes, they have the Ash already, but they can, uh, they could have flexed it earlier in the, in the game, which I think is good to early pick it. But yeah, we are going to see the Urgot, which is pretty good. I, I really like the team comp so far. I think yeah. PRG is doing a good good job with the draft. Maybe could have substituted everyone for something else, but they definitely do need the AP damage, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, Have you ever seen Peanut? Is, is, is it any, are there any games on Peanut's match history that uh, screwed me everyone? Let's have a look quickly, just watching at his overview. It doesn't show that. But if I look at his match history in detail, I don't see anything. So, I mean, maybe he's just, like I'm saying, he maybe he's experimenting at the at the event, you know? Having a little bit of fun with it, but we have the Volleyball Locket plus the Annie Hover. We have not seen an Annie in uh, VS Gaming any time, like, recently. Wait, like, I don't even remember the last time I've seen an Annie in general. For some reason, my mind tells me that that's something not would like to play. I don't know why. I mean, prayer to Annie support was somewhat of a thing when they rebuffed her AD to attack, sorry, attack range. As Annie used to have one of the most oppressive attack ranges in the game for support, to just bully at max distance and never take punishment back, but uh, was nerfed and then rebuffed somewhat later. Never really resurfaced though. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, that's something that's, since the rune rework, it's been like something that's been available, the Predator Annie. Not a p lot of people realize it was a thing in the beginning, but I definitely think it's actually a decent uh, decent thing to pick up on Annie, considering that a lot like... of people like to flash Tibbers anyways. Yeah. But sometimes it almost spares you to flash. You can just Predator and then just alt them down, you know? Basically a makeshift uh, Malphite support. Yeah, basically, yeah. It's 100% how it is. Um, honestly, uh, since the not rework, well, I think it was rework technically, with the with the ulti the mechanic that was somewhat changed a while back, it's actually better according to the the any Reddit sub well, any subreddits to flash W stun then Tibbers ulti to guarantee the stun because it's actually like a half second delay between you flash ulti as Tibbers before the bear appears on the ground. The locking them down with the stun can result in a guaranteed lockdown. Yeah, so, I, mean, note. I mean, at this stage, I'm definitely going to say that uh, I'm not too big of a fan of Wonder Woman's comp. I think it's uh, the the Annie and Vladimir and Nasus. I don't know, it's not super strong picks at the moment. I definitely see how Vi Volibear can make a difference. It's it's almost fairly easy ganking, but I don't know. The Evelyn, I think, is going to be much more effective. They needed the AP as well anyways, like you mentioned, and... A lot of people just don't know how to deal with the Evelyn. You need to get a lot of deep vision into the jungle to to know where the Evelyn is. So at this rate, I don't know. I don't see massive amounts of vision. And with all the control wards um, PRG has been buying, cancelling out any vision that the enemy team could possibly get, it just feels like this Evelyn is going to be really good. Yeah, I mean, looking at the uh, the blue side comp, they sort of have a very very beefy team, which is not what Evelyn likes to play into unless she gets a serious snowball. They have a bit of trouble with like uh, one shelling anyone other than the Annie and Ash. Maybe Nautilus because he is support. So uh, I'd like to see where the Peanut does get that early game lead as he needs to in this matchup. If he falls behind, it's sort of just a situation of snack and armor. But uh, overall, I mean, Nautilus going for the exhaust is kind of questionable in my opinion. Would have liked to have seen the ignite instead. It seems like Fire really likes his exhausts though. 
yeah and um i mean it's it has its place in this case it like i said before as well it could definitely be very good against the Yasuo, especially if the Yasuo gets fed and he gets onto your carries. Uh, the exhaust will not only slow him down, but also cut down a lot of that uh, attack speed and damage. So that's definitely a good thing to have, but it means it, it feels like he's already on the back foot and not very confident. So it's uh, definitely it's not one of those problems. But other than that, the Annie did actually take the barrier. So that's also going to help a lot for any of the one shots that we're talking about, about this Evelyn. Um, I mean, yeah, we get to see any Eddie Carry or Team Comp attempting the the teleport summon a spot on Eddie Carry. It feels like nobody quite playing for that just yet. I'm not saying go for it. I'm just saying that uh, I would have liked to have seen a team actually having practiced with it before in the past. Yeah, another thing we haven't really seen, and I mean, it's not that uh, popular anymore. I know it was picked at Walls, I believe, but actually Yumi, it seems like, is a bit, bit died off in South Africa at the moment after she's not that OP anymore. I mean, it's still definitely a skill-based champion. There's a lot of... Uh, a bit, bit hard to play, definitely. But, um, I mean, in this case, if, you, if you're talking about switching up summoner abilities, that op opens up the ADC to taking maybe like a, a TP and then also you get a lot of uh, combat uh, summoners from the Yumi. But yeah, it seems like that pick has not been surfacing a lot anymore in South Africa. Personally, I'm not actually a fan of Yumi and Alping. I find that her Qs are very uh, unnecessary, complicated. It yeah. doesn't. It doesn't like. How, how do you explain it? Hmm. I actually feel like a Q feels buggy almost to me. Like when you shoot it out and yeah, it doesn't it goes, react properly. Yeah, it just feels like it doesn't work right on a ping. There's something wrong with it on high yeah. ping. Yeah, you, you can't get the like. You, you watch a Yumi one trick or something, and you see the the micro mechanics to the the, the Yumi Q, and then you try to R ping, and it's like yeah. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, it, just it doesn't, doesn't even show you like half the time until it's crashed into the wall kind of thing. Yeah, I don't know what happens at max range on a Q, but it doesn't work. <laughs> it's just something is wrong. It was Batman. Yumi potential, not quite there until we get some low ping. Not saying bring us uh, SA servers by any means, but... Uh... And I mean, that's coming from you as well, where you have like one 150 ping around and... I mean, that already happens to me on 200, so I, I thought it would maybe even be better on Cape Thumping, but apparently not. Yeah, 156 to 158 is the normal. Hashtag Cape Town Master Race. But, uh, looking to see if we have that cheeky invade. There's both a Volleybeard Nautilus as well as a Thresh in this game, so cheeky invades are the name of the game, and we have that stack coming through quite nicely. This time they're ready for the invade, I see. Oh, it does be careful. <laughs> why, why does it go? Oh, okay. Air blend. Peanuts. Evil Logan Humane. Exhaust can be applied. Thresh the first one down. Urgot not designed to group with the team and as a result do end up losing the Thresh. Why, why does it up with these uh, split invades the whole time? Yeah, and I, I definitely think that's really good. They punish this. I love it. I want to see... PRG be punished for this every time because it feels like they they want to invade almost every game but they don't know why they're invading and they're not invading properly again the ergot was a bit disjointed and also they were like they, they have these gaps between when you're invading you want to almost stand on top of each other and you want to have uh, someone that can tank if there is someone waiting for you in the front and it just feels like they they mess it up every single time and i want them punished for it oh, yeah. <laughs> i'll just I'll just ask them to uh... To, to practice that kind of thing. Yeah. Do some more research into I mean, Volleybear. I mean, that's how you learn. If you get punished, you learn. Volleybear actually losing his passive on the first camp. That's a, that's a bit of an interesting one. Volleybear below the threshold. How does this bit like matchup work? Yasuo and Annie. I think, in theory, Yasuo should win it. But uh, unfortunately, the winner won't be able to block any uh, ultimate, the Tibbers. Outside, uh, Ash opting to go for the non comet build, the standard Ash build, unfortunately. So, no insane poke in the early stages, which kind of understands with the normal support. Like, it's kind of understandable. Uh, reminder sheet before. Oh, wait a second on the man. So, getting picked off here. Oh, abnormal super way. Not quite gonna go down. Does get punished pretty hard. Forced to, to burn the heal on the flash, and that invade means that uh, he's playing a little bit more respect, Motside. You need to sync up times, fix the scoreboard. 46, I've done scoreboard, 47, 48. 
49. Okay, cool. 50. We synced. Awesome. Alright, so everyone so far just looking to do the camps. Uh, first death was well, on the thresh, so something to keep in mind he does not have. Uh, should we die with a flash up? That's interesting. I mean, at that stage, I don't know if it was worth bending a flash. He was uh, he was pretty caught off, and Volley Bear and the Nautilus were all uh, basically on top of him, so I don't know. The kill did go over to the Ash, though, which is pretty good for them. Yeah, that long sword coming in very classic. You can already see it serve the bite for bot side, line to bull down tempo. Yeah, 19 you think about small, as well. Small leads are almost like investments, they grow over time. Slowly but surely, it like, becomes stronger. Suddenly, a long sword has become into a BF sword because of that early game like cheese kill. In theory, at least. And I mean, also. With the longsword, a, a good item ball to start off with the Ashmo sometimes is the Essence Reaver. So that will also straightly build into something that's already good for her. So pretty good for her since he doesn't have to rush her IE. Peanut clearing the pink one might be a little bit of trouble. Does get caught out. Has the oh. flash available. Trying to get to the war. Fails the flash though. Lost like the uh, air blade. Trying to get to the wave. Will go and pay the price as well. The flash flip coming through. And uh, you hate to see it, but you love it to happen, I guess. That uh, missed position and uh, three kills not over the side of the IBC team. Yeah, and take this win uh, to get to the, the third and final match. That's now one. That kill over actually went over to the Nautilus. So that's 1-1 one, one in the bot lane with one on Nautilus. Um, Volley Bear as well. So they have a uh, 3-0 already four minutes into the game. Almost one minute, one kill per minute. So that, that's pretty good for Vulnerable considering how the last game went for them already, eh? Yeah, but they have a scaling comp which uh, I'd like to see if they they can play towards it. Uh, not that uh, red side doesn't scale particularly well either, but Nas is the top side. Almost like the Vega all over again. No more Teemo in sight, so... Just the thing this guy was playing Teemo last game. Yeah, this time he doesn't have to look at trading or anything. He just needs to see if how, if he can get as much farm as possible. It does seem like the Urgot does push in naturally with those uh, with a shotgun legs amount of area damage. So if he just uh, stays back and gets much farm, stack those Qs. It's very interesting to pick Nasus. I mean, I felt like Teemo. Not sure what the reason was, but was fully behind in CS despite sort of AFK farming top lane side. Putting on a champion that's dependent on CS. Might have been a mistake. Should have maybe looked into you. I mean, a little bit more on a tank. I'm a beefy tank. Like the, the Cyan Malphi kind of uh, story. Sort of relevant despite not necessarily getting uh, ahead in CS. Cyan, very good option. I got. The first trick of the game is going to be that mountain. Let's see if either Cyan actually play for it. Peanut, uh, despite getting caught out and uh, dying for it, still up a fair amount of CS, but hasn't really had any impact on the map. Sort of trying to AFK farm towards that 6. Airblade opting to just uh, go for the attack instead of the defense, force the flash out and uh, fly. Just there in case. And it seems like actually Peanut is going to be top here for this Nasus, but uh, Nasus is 6, so I don't think he can actually tower dive here. He does, have, does not have 6 himself, so no execute. Oh, just uh, just the tip. Yeah, that's uh, a little bit too fast. We'll lose the Drake as well. Yes, that's a lot of time wasting here from Peanut. He will pick up the blue, but in the meanwhile, blue team uh, Wonderboom is actually picking up uh, Earth Drake for themselves. So, I mean, that's a really good investment of their time. Yeah, I think last game five and all the drakes went over to the side of PRG, so this is a good, good start for uh, IBC. Yeah, pushing the early game lead like it should be. When all that time, uh, only thing Peanut has managed to do was uh, poke the Nasus a little bit under the tower, take blue, and now he's just going to wait for the scuttle. So I don't know. It's it seems like there's a lot of wasted time on Red's side. I don't know if they know what they want to do with this game. A little bit of nuisance to an extent, more than anything. Yeah, now he has six. See, now he's going to be not only invisible, so harder to track, but he's also going to have that execute. So now let's see if he can do something with that now. 
Yeah, he should start coming, starting to come online. Like I mentioned before, Evelyn, kind of the jungler who wants to AFK farm towards that condition. Almost like the mouth fight of the jungle to an extent. Becomes a lot more uh, useful now, post 6. Pink control, pretty decent top side. They most likely would see the Evelyn playing there, but uh, very, very cheekily placing those blue wards down. Bottom is one to make sure that everyone hasn't snuck anywhere close to the bot side. So they're safe, so you can pretty accurately say that uh, bot lane could overextend if they'd like to in this situation. Even though they don't really know where everyone is just yet. Yeah, they're going to have to somehow get some deep wards to know where the Evelyn is. Other than that, they have no idea where she is. It seems like he's going to look for the invade here, actually on the volley bear. Gets the pick. He's getting below the threshold for that. Uh, oh god. It looks like it will be enough. Actually, Peanut not necessarily requiring the uh, uh, fear beyond death. And that's going to be one kill over to Peanut. And I mean, you can see that Vo Volley Bear is just not tank enough just yet to survive those, uh, that damage from the Evelyn. A little top side. Does it Dane force the flash out? Unfortunately, Ogo not having the ultimate to apply the slow. Will they go for the dive though? It's a bit risky. There are three though. Ah, they're just gonna leave a movie. They're sleeping. Don't want to dive at Nasus. It's one of those Kane uh, or the Trick to G players. I think it's, this is even the skin that Trick to G uses, if I'm not mistaken. Or Nasus. I think the Nasus will probably have to back soon. He has no mana and he's gonna get div at do Dove, I guess. Yep. Oh, I got pulling the aggro, so it looks like you'll be able to just drop that one and uh, continue for the, the uh, tower plays. A little bit of late rotation from Deadly Virus, Flash and Barry still available. Flash is in, misses the Tempest, but does get the kill nonetheless. And Blade stunned at the turret. What are you guys doing? The double looking for the triple foster to flash out. Peanut coming in a little bit late for that one. A deadly Virus, uh... Doing some work here in the top lane, making sure that the rotation was maybe late, but it was definitely worth it. I mean, you just, uh, you just dove my friend. It's my turn to dive you guys. Did end up missing the Tibbers, but still working out. Evelyn. Red side TP, looking to try to catch out the Nasus. Once again, it's the Trinomir situation all over again. And, uh, you know, bot side, inhumane killer. Beautiful flay just before death will result in the one for one trade. Eddie Carry and Eddie Carry getting killed. And uh, Nasus down as well. Peanut picking up that one for himself. Two for one. And uh, Rift Shadow still, still on the table for either side to make a play for. And, I mean, things looking still fairly even. The gold lead isn't the advantage of PRG, but both teams making a lot of plays, making trying to stay relevant in this game, making sure they're not fall behind like they did the last game. So I'm actually just glad to see that Wonderbomb is actually making some proactive plays, even though they're, they're not just giving away their lead uh, to like this top lane dive, for example, and he's still making an effort to keep themselves in the game. Top side. Free play caught. 11 minutes in, still another 3 minutes or so. Good work at the place, get some extra cash in the pocket. Some pocket money if you want. Drake on the map shortly. Cheeky knockup. Optic not to take it with that last breath. Doesn't really know where Volley Bear is. Could be winning in the shadows. Next dragon will be spawning in 20 seconds and it is going to be a Cloud Drake. So it looks like Riot is giving us a lot of variety of Drakes. We saw at the VS Championships in July, we only got Ocean Drake, so apparently they, they got the memo and uh, they're giving us a bit more variety now. What if it's like tied to the seasons or something? Do you like which part of the year? Maybe part of the day or something? I don't know. If you're completely random. But All I know is, is we got nothing except Ocean Drakes in July Championships. Ocean for days? Yep. If I remember correctly, Royalty had like four oceans in the one game. Oh, Evelyn Forster just disengaged with Thresh. Paying the price, has the flash a bit of applies the box, trying to walk this one off with inhumane, biting off a little bit too much. Uh, Tib has been brought in, curtain call, 
Last Airblade virus, Super Low, but Airblade does go down as just before Deadly does. That's gonna be three of his dead. Thresh as well. Yasuo, Flash, Auto Attack, passive from Nautilus. We'll be able to lock down Abnormal in Human Kill with the Flash in as well. Bunny Pilot picking up that one, so now three for Nautilus, two Ash with the uh, little bit of a killing speed bounce in his head. Yeah, and that's that long sword we talked about. That's the investment on the Ash. Ash now being 302 with that Blade of the Rune King being completed. And uh, it seems like she's using it. Not gonna lie. Yeah, like you said, that innovate early game, getting them quite a big advantage. Peanut sort of hovering around, doesn't have flash or ulti available, but does have the smite. I don't know about that attempt on the Ash, I'll be honest. I don't see that one ending out well. I but, think if uh, you want to. Oh, he's gonna look for the fight, actually. Okay, yeah, it was a bit of a. Disdain. Yeah, the disdain was a bit of a. Uh... I don't know, an ambitious one. What's it, plus 12 stacks? Yeah, definitely. That's going to be Nasus uh, barking all the way to the bank. Cute trick to G music. With the wagging tail. But yeah, Nasus is a bit deep in the jungle here. I think they did spot him out on a ward, so he needs to be oh. very careful. But, uh, force the flash out, the stun following up, plus the volley from Ash results in the free kill. Deadly virus, the Annie pick working out quite nicely, actually. Yeah, and this is really good rotations from the team. They'll be able to get back in time and bot lane to actually catch the wave. So, I mean, not losing out on anything and really good work there from the bot lane rotating onto that kill. So, the pings have come through. That's going to be the Rift Herald now under siege. And it uh, should be a pretty free attempt, but uh, Peanut may just look for the uh, the counter, actually. Oh god, as well, Thresh making his way back up through from bot side. 1,500 health left on the roof. Peanut makes his move. Looking for the smite. It's gonna be stolen away. Rift Herald Shelly now secured, but Peanut failing the ultimate. That means he's stuck in the pit for the next few seconds. The splash is still on cooldown. Shot down. Fear beyond death, though. Come back to Urgot. And he ditch effort to flash away from the, the ogre, but it won't be enough as the Thresh locks have done some beautifully played fight and steal now secured from the side of IBC. Oh no, PRG actually. Yeah, PRG. I mean, it was I was about to actually say that Vulnerable is making really good attempts at uh, not only the rotations like I mentioned before, but it's like they, they know that PRG likes to do these early objectives, so they want to try their hand at them themselves. So, really good idea from him to go from the Rift Herald, but at the end, not being able to get that, speaking of. Bot side, though. Well, the, the replay overhead playing. Uh, beautiful Ash, ultimate arrow. Bot side gets that pick. Majestic and all. Nice little cheeky play. A little bit disappointed with the new Ash skin. Not gonna lie. Yeah, I really like the new Ash skin, but the problem is I spent too much money on this game, so I need to look away. Oh, flip overhead, inhumane killer. Needs to be careful. Oh, last air blip. Yeah, dude, I, I played a game of Solo Q earlier, and uh, I gotta say the new Ashkin is absolutely amazing. The dance is so cool. Plus, the audio is pretty sick as well. Air blade. The flip into the deadly virus. Oh, fry, 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 fry. where are you going, my dude? A little bit too deep, pulling some, some turret aggro. Well, it seems like uh, they're all going flank. to look at cracking open this tier one in mid, and. That's going to be pretty good for them. I mean, Wunderboom seems like they're doing a really good job so far. I really like the this team fight that uh, again they're having much better than the last one. The Jen picking up that kill, Curtin Cole coming in clutch, unable to land the second shot though. But the reappearance of the Tibbers Bear gonna be able to block the hook nicely from Great. Tier one turn. So currently still in corner half. Don't know if the TP was necessary, but Nasus, but I'm sure it was appreciated. Evelyn. Bye. Lots of damage, Evelyn gets the shot on, needs to be careful, the plus 12 coming through. Lantern applied, plus the flare with the box now, Peanut disengaged, but uh, deadly able to finish off the first one. Will Slap go down? He does, actually. Great. Double kill, looking for the triple. Airblade. Peanut. Charm. Deadly fires the triple into that last little bit of damage, so... Is, is Deadly Virus like an Annie main or something? Um, I can quickly check. I think my um, names oh, for that, yeah, I don't really have an IGN. Shall we use Bart for that siege? So the tier 1 turret has been crushed. So despite the kills going over to the side of blue, 
uh, PRG do actually come uh, away with a little bit of gold in the pocket as well, plus an objective. Trading off for tier one, though, man. Actually, looking at Deadly Virus's profile, it doesn't seem like he's a uh, any main. Actually, he plays a very, very mean alley, though. That's why it's quite surprising. Yeah, definitely. It seems like his mains are Diana, Yasuo, and Vigar. So Vigar playing being played the last game. Ash, not going to be quite lucky with that arrow, unfortunately. Volley missing as well, cheeky lantern art to safety, like every good thresh should do. Did you ever play Thresh? Me? I actually used to love playing Thresh uh, back in, I believe, 2015 with my one um, pre-made ADC. We used to do Israel Thresh a lot. Um, it was something we enjoyed playing together a lot, but I mean, uh, ever since I've not been too much of a fan of the grab-type champions or hook-type champions, so I haven't really put, tried my hand at it again ever since. Maybe now and then you can't Leona as a hook based support? Uh, sort of, yeah, I guess so. Um, it feels different to me though. I like enjoy her more than others. Yeah, Blade just gonna be deleted by Virus. Doesn't even bother to carry on all the attacking. Let us the Timbers tick away. Peanut though, pick him to kill on the bunny part. That's gonna be the second death of Ash now in Humane Killer. Curtain call. Ooh, the last shot of the Jane Ultimate almost gonna pick up the Annie, but uh, not enough damage. Anybody's game still 20 to 13, two trades. Look at them pick up their third now. Peanut dead means that he cannot contest. Potentially the next reset into Baron. I'd like to see them playing for that objective. Perhaps darts around looking for some sort of pick. Don't want a 50 50 flip. But we saw what happened with the Rift Gerald. Peanut able to steal that away. So no reason to take that coin flip. You are down in levels for the jungler. What I want to see from uh, Vonderboom here is, and this is a problem in the last game as well, they keep on getting all these skills, right? And they keep on making good plays, but they don't get anything from it. Yes, they've got these three dragons now, but it's not going to be dragons that's going to help them a lot late game. They've got two um, Cloud Drakes and one Earth Drake. The Earth Drake is going to help them, but the problem that I'm having is they still don't have the tier one towers and top and bot. So the one thing I want them to, to try and do here is try and crack open those towers and then work from there. Maybe try and look, get more vision control around Baron and then work from there. Because at the moment, it just feels like they're sort of just, yes, they're winning fights, but it's not, nothing is coming from it. And, and at this stage, it's still PRG's game because they have the gold lead and they can still win this. There's no reason why they can't still take this game. He not being 7 4. Uh, Yasuo is definitely going to still start scaling. Jin's going oh. for a second item now. So that's something to watch out for. Peanut not able to find that blue buff in Humane Killer. Sort of like a great shark or great white shark attack. So just the drive by ops not to go in for the kill there. Just walks right past. Dangerously. Baron ping from red side may just go for an attempt. Volley been making his way towards the bots of the map. Not that Brit would know, as they don't have any vision around that side. Very nicely controlled by Blue. Just something Berserk. to remember, the PRG does not have TP on the Urgot. So, if he is going to be in the bot side wave and there is a Baron start up and a fight breaks out, then he would not Notless. be Notless, what are you doing my friend? You cannot afford to walk up to Baron solo like that at this point in the game. The enemy team has vision control, that's just too disrespectful. Notless burning the ultimate, actually cancelling it to be honest. So, Deacon then is down. Ash. Looking for the 1v1, the turret definitely helping the disdain. Not gonna be there, that's yet another free kill. Ash picking up that one. So that most likely uh, neutralizing the 1-to-1 the one -one advantage. So still four, man, four men on the map, but uh, gotta keep in mind that the Baron is uh, gonna be taken without Volibear being close by. So he will have to still rotate to contest, but uh, Baron call now stopped. Peanut realizing he's not quite as tanky as he usually is with that Evelyn. Yeah, and he does have the Lich Bane done now, so he is going for that second item, which looks like it's going to be Azonia's. But everyone recalling here, they need to remember that there's a lot of stacking members, and they're going to not only take over vision control of this area, but they might be looking at maybe baiting it out, no? It looks like they're just going to go back to their lane, there's nothing much going to come from that. Did you, did you say stacky members or stacking members? Stacking members. Okay, just clarifying, I thought you said <laughs> stacky members. <laughs> Yeah. What are stacky members? Members who like to stack, stacky members. The stacky boy. 
Uh, your Nasus, your Vega. Oh, Who true. else is a stacky boy? Uh... Are you not? Smiter Plot has the flash, but Red Side collapse. Looks like Inhumane might have got a little bit too aggro. Forced the flash out. Flash, depth, charge, deadly virus now down the box. Not gonna keep you alive. Thresh, the next one dead. Jin and uh, Peanut sort of leading his team to death. The Baron Temp might come through as uh, Peanut looks to pick up his blue instead. Should not smite as he will need it for Baron if he does go for the contest. And they look like they're heading straight to Baron now. I mean, they do, do have three members down from PRG. Peanut is still up. He did manage to escape that fight with a little bit of health. So they are going to start it up. This might be a 50-50. Peanut does have smites up. They need to watch out for this. He is really good with the smites. Oh. He did manage to steal away the A little bit trail. early. It was blind. Oh, NASA securing the, the Baron, actually. That's but that's uh, very close for comfort that the Nasus has to go uh, secure it for you. Well, but, I guess uh, might not even attempt it. Yeah, so that's maybe something they need to look at. But other than that, at least they did get it. So now they will be able to run it down mid here to see if they can maybe siege a tower. Is that another plus 12? How much do you get for Baron stacks? I think it's the same. It's all counted on the one, on the one thing. Is it, is it a minion? Uh, it's basically super minion champions, uh, big monsters, you know. Oh, okay, so it would be a plus 12 or plus 7. There we go. Asses players out there. Peanut with the face check and uh, it's caught. Oh, that's a big Yasuo ultimate. but unfortunately, it's not going to be any follow up. Lantern unable to be clicked, so bunny of a little bit too much. And uh, not what you can afford. A curse call just for the, the fadeaway damage, I guess. And with that Baron, they're going to look at doing another Earth Drake. So that's two Earth Drakes and two Cloud Drakes. And it just feels like uh, Wonderboom has turned over a new a new leaf, if you would say, from their Boom. Despite the 12 kill advantage plus four Dragons and Baron, they're only just short of 3k gold ahead. So it still is anybody's game to win. Kind of feels like Peanut has been baiting his team a little bit too hard, too aggressive. Uh, a little bit too cocky, getting caught out, and uh, the team is starting to get punished for it. Thresh just making sure they have uh, side vision here so they don't get um, rotated on from the side. And I mean, they are. I mean, at the moment, we see Nasus in top lane. They still haven't taken the tier ones in the side lane, so that's something to, to watch out for. Nasus does have TP, so we'll be able to join fights. So does Urgot. Two for five for f two for four for five Nasus 114 CS versus two for nine 159 Yasuo. That's a that's oh. a good amount of damage on Nasus Q. You need to be careful. Ash is sitting on that ulti trigger finger can quite easily pick you off Jin if you step up. And him to now exposed. Evelyn is trying to pipe pressure from behind, giving the spook factor. Nasus needs to decide what he needs to do. I mean, bot lane is split pushing. They need to have an idea of what they want to do here. Yeah, so I call out the overextend coming through. There we go. Now they can get this tier one safely. Meanwhile, the bot lane. Um. Nasus has. Oh, Ash has teleport. Well, doesn't have teleport, sorry. Nasus should have been the one that sent home to direct defend the bottom. I yeah, yes, really understand the call of putting Ash, but look at the kite, look at the moves, the damage, the disdain, the flash. Volley, auto attack, and uh, Volley Pie quite easily taken out uh, the yeah, guys. Yeah, and it seems like they sent her down for a reason. Ash feeling quite confident in getting the kill. She hears that she can't get back to the top side to try and carry on the siege of the team. Needs. And Nasus has the teleport to potentially match and uh, regroup up with the team, but uh, most likely going to be the second inhibitor now down. Peanut for the assassin, he does get deadly virus. That's a big shutdown into the follow up. Yasuo now alive, catches the support, but uh, the knock up gonna be there from fire as uh, Yasuo ups the back off. Not gonna go for the last breath. Fire. Peanut finishing off yet another member. So Peanut now actually starting to do some work. The stopwatch giving him a little more time as that inhumane passive kicks in. Not enough to keep you alive from last air blade. Breathing your last breath, it seems. Nasus. Peanut. Not gonna get there for the top, but he will continue the siege. Nasus, probably enough mana for one more Q stack. 
Red side TP Ergon looking to try to collapse as well. Has pretty much everything available, but it looks like it's gonna be a repeat bunny pilot just gunning him down with Airblade here for the flag instead. Turn it back on to him. Uh, Fear Beyond Death apply very early does go down, so that one for one trade. Yeah, the fact that the Ash is continuously 1v1ing the Ergot is uh, it's pretty interesting. I mean, that's three eyes, almost four items now going for that uh, IE or Essence Reaver next on the Ash. So Ash seems like she's a strong boy. Yeah, and Long Sword translating into a lot. Who would have guessed? You know, the seem the Yasuo is almost gonna hit his power spike there of 12 deaths, so something to look out for. <laughs> Shame. <laughs> Standard Yasuo with things. Thirty to eighteen. Um I mean, just look at the map, the Drake not going to be up anytime soon, but Baron on the other hand, should be up the next minute and a half or so. So, it's only play around again, uh, play around again. Last Baron pretty free, but uh, generally Baron fights tend to be the make it or break it position, but uh, like I mentioned before, not a member that you can one shot, this is where Peanut's going to struggle, does actually cancel out the cost it seems. But uh, Peanut will go down and result of Volibear very aggressively flashing up onto him. And no connection for that Thresh Hook. Nass is on the other hand, deciding whether he wants to go for the flank. I mean, at the meanwhile, the Ergot is in the top lane, which means it is a, a fairly easy siege for them here in the bot lane. Yeah, he needs the back. Like yesterday. Cannot afford to defend this tier 2. Uh, Red Sun need to communicate just to back off and let that one go. Play for the base defense. You cannot afford to try and defend uh, tier 2 as it's quite easily diveable, especially with a comp like that. And uh, Ergot got topside for some reason. Another Infernal. Maybe he's calling the bluff, saying, seeing that he does think they are going to take the dragon. So he's just going to keep on uh, pushing top lane by the looks of things. I mean, Baron is, already, is also up. Uh, getting vision priority around there would also be a good call. Oh, God, should just hang in the shadows and see what they do here. If the bridge is trying to burn, look for the contents from behind. If not, carry on the siege. Otherwise, you just reset. You've committed to that decision to be top at this point, but uh, I, I don't know whether it was a worthwhile decision or what the thought process behind it was. No TP. You can see blue actually do rotate up to top side, so they are going to look at... Uh, getting this vision, they do have that one control ward, control ward on Baron, so technically they have direct vision onto the Baron, so not a, too much of a problem for them. Uh, technically they would have the most vision here. Yeah, there we go. They're Red side bot on. lane, they're going to be stacking around the, uh, the, the bot wave, which is not ideal when Baron is the next objective at play. You need your entire team here in case something breaks out. If they're looking for another assassination onto potentially Annie, these will be careful as it is an Ash as well as an Annie in that brush. So you step up a little bit too far, you're going to get one shot. So it needs to play this fight correctly. This right here would be the breaking point for IBC. If they throw this Baron, they could potentially be PRG back in the driving seat, despite being so far behind in terms of uh, momentum. Only 2k gold difference. No more control. Ergot bot lane does not have TP. Where are you going, friend? The steel not going to be there. As Ash takes it down, and that's going to be Evelyn now down. This almost a guaranteed team fight now for the side of blue as they play it perfectly. Once again, Ergot on the wrong side of the map for no reason. He does not have teleport. He cannot afford to go and push that lane. Yeah, I think they're just going to walk it down mid here. There's uh, still two two people dead on the side of PRG, and I don't know if they can defend against this team. It's a pretty fed Annie and Ash uh, that they have to go through to make sure that they can't push this down. 18 seconds till the respawn. May just go for the top inhibitor instead. Nope, that's going to be the first Nexus Titan now down. And Blade trying to make any attempt that he can. You need to push now, otherwise the Nexus will be going down. That's the final breath and uh, the game done and dusted. One to one will be going to game number three shortly. Sinister, dude, where do you think the, the side of uh, PRG went wrong? I don't know. It feels like, first off, the, I mean, yes, it, Peanut did get uh, eventually some kills onto the uh, Evelyn, but it feels like things went wrong from the beginning. Maybe stop invading and just play like a traditional game, cover the entrances, try to scale up, uh, pick some more conventional picks. I mean, I, I'm still calling it. I think he needs to get that Javan jungle in. 
And uh, yeah, I, I'm not a big fan of the Yasuo either. So just go back to standard. I think maybe get the Syndra early pick phase done again for last Airblade. He played it really, really well, and it can be flexed to the bot lane if they really do have a problem with the mid lane matchup. As we did see Abnormal Slime actually playing it as well before, so I think they can just flex it to whoever they need it to. So go for the yeah, standard and strong picks at the moment. I don't think the comp worked like you mentioned in champs. Like I don't know if the Evelyn pick was gonna went or was, was gonna work out, as he's only able to assassinate really two members, the Annie and the Ash. Even then, um, they have a fairly well-rounded comp towards the later stages thanks to that NASA stack. So unfortunately, the Eve not working out. A couple of questionable face checks here and there, but uh, nonetheless, a GG well played, guys. We'll see you shortly for game number three. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. That's pretty good. That's fair enough for them. And what will they do with it though? Looks like they are Don't need to take a team fight. Just drive the minions, but it looks like they have other plans. And Mott, beautiful team man locked on Hang on, that's the second jump coming through as uh, the Sanja bites the dust and uh, Red Side Snowball continues. Baron in hand. Yeah. Not able to get. Oh, that's going to cost you. Nunik on the other hand here for the counter. Bumpkin boy in a little bit of trouble. Super low. The cheeky, cheeky turn back, but Echo, wait, Berserk, there it is, realizes, hang on, Karzix is uh, not where I thought he'd be. Let's pick up the kill. Hold on my head, misposition. Done. Is enough as uh, Pen finishes up the kill on a tiny game, and that's misfortune now done. Uh, Tristan is well out, dying rage from jacked up stuff, says, no friends, you're not touching me. And uh, that stack not quite working out according to plan. Bit of a back and forth, Berserk does go super low. Vladimir Ultimate should be enough as, uh, as the Poe finishes off of that one quick. If they can still use these CPs and the side lane pressure of the Trinity, because remember, Trinity is doing fairly well in the top lane. He has two CS up. He has oh. a kill. Speaking of uh, a head, so yeah, one target does find Blitzcrank going down. Result that is not a target you should be trying to defend. But Wraith, on the other hand, with the overextend, that's a uh, in battery. That's going to be the uh, Lycan Wraith dropping on the pick as well. Lucian now dead. Big fine set side of uh, Red, but here comes Mr. Poe. Does not care if you've uh, assassinated the rest of his team. He is looking to take some fights, but now return kill Bumpkin Boy picking up that one. Plus the Yoink Fizz. Ooh, misplay. Night double tick into that uh, double kill. So the back and forth. Two members alive for the two members alive. Even trade. Yeah, Tristana was killed off a little bit too early in that game, and this is something I talked about last game as well when she was Kaiser. It just feels like you give this massive lead over to a bot lane. 50 Baron now at 6,000 house as the rest of Red Side come to collapse. This is not what she can afford. It is a new new though. And uh, Red Turn actually falling, but here comes that curtain call. Mr. Pope, Pop Blossom. Persona now dead. First one on Karzix trading. That means no jungle left. That's the Echo Double. Ergo up coming in clean. And looks like Blue Side is able to clean up this fight beautifully as the Baron is now good. The best of their abilities, especially seeing as this is the first game of the, the tournament. You know, top side. Beautiful uh, cash coming through. Was the Poe very low? Unfortunately, what the pop loss of the title Wraith not gonna be able to survive yet again the one for one trade, but it looks like uh, Jack was an objective throughout. So this is the big win it or break it moment. Let's see where the blue side EHS starts to rotate off. It's gonna be that free objective. It looks like it will be with the blue side teleport Trenomir going in very aggressive. Not much rage available, but that's gonna be the immediate uh, rejection from Monsters. No friend, you're not allowed in this pit. Stopwatch coming and he clashed that little bit of health left. And uh, the fight continues. Wraith does go down. Mott not able to uh, be assassinated for this team fight, so he can quite easily uh, allow his team to, to win and uh, carry to victory. He, he got deleted in the previous team fight, and uh, that results in the game. Wait it out. If they do face check, then we do see actually Mr. Poe is a bit low, and they are going to re back. It's actually a bit risky. I mean. Oh. Speaking I'm of send a couple of members. Jungler on taking to the Shadow Realm with the QSS. Not gonna keep him alive, but Mr. Poe's ultimate now down. No smite available from the side of. Uh, and possibly take the game here off of this play. Yeah, head last uh, saving grace opportunity. Looks for the kill to Berserk, but not gonna be able to get that as the beautifully timed ultimate comes through. As uh, actually hold that, hold the double kill. Looking for that trade, but the shotgun and he's gonna be doing too much work. Uh, the Winnings, though, trying to finish off that last little damage. Still the. With. Sona missing her ult and then first trying to go in for the second engage without ult, but then the Vi ulting the wrong person. So a lot of misplays here from uh, Mpongeni High School. You're gonna misplay his first beautiful flash. It's gonna be able to finish off Lucian with that early 
investment, giving it a little bit of time to sort of just watch it. Attempt at the Baron, the Crescendo gonna be able to lock down. Mr. the point, thousand half left. It looks like the Baron not gonna go down just yet, but it does actually. Garen not picking that objective, so that's gonna be wrecked and dead. Plus the uh, oh, Berserk not gonna get there, just short. And uh, team fight as well as the Baron, not a more aggressive. He has the tempo, the hook and land onto the cannon. This would be a beautiful opportunity right here just to pull that trigger, the two man stack. I feel like they should look for the punish. There it is, the two man locked out, the jump in, the hop skip. Pot picking up the first one, looking for the second one, has to reset the jump with the bomb. Not gonna be necessary as Pen Dragon finishes off what he started. It could be, it's also um, Kung Fu Panda, I believe. That's also the, oh, right, the, turtle. Right, right, right. the turtle is called Mr. Oh. Fella, I believe. Beautiful flash, depth charge gonna be there. Unfortunately, not gonna be able to land the burn skip, but it should be enough ignites. Invested on the heal. A little bit late, so won't be able to get much out of, out of that, but... Look for that trade, but the shotgun, and he's gonna be doing too much work. Uh, the Winnings, though, trying to finish off that last little damage. Still the half plus a red buff, keeping him alive. And it seems like they would just have a lost bit of breath in this game. Will West will be able to do anything for th with this now? Is this going to be that last... That last... Can work so much better if you do like utility. I mean, yourself, it could be Janna. Oh, top side ignite can be applied. Mr. Poe getting the kill, but it looks like light and wait for the counter. A lot of shield. I don't know if you have the damage via aftershock and all. There's we'll a way to try and force the flash away, though. Yeah. But yeah, like you, like you mentioned, honestly, I buff, but uh, oh, flash. We know mid side hole in my head. A lot of damage. They're not gonna be applied. The barrier is gonna be burned very early. But Berserk finding himself in an awkward situation. The science now applied as he casts his way towards those turrets. Flashing away beautifully played actually. So no death is gonna be coming through just yet. Jacked up stuff, dashing the ways the status line comes through, but uh, not exactly what you want to be seeing. Is that's got a lot of crucial ultimates now burned for the sign of red, which means there should be a free siege coming through. But Berserk has other ideas. Look to try to take out the AD carry as uh, Wraith commits to the Mordecai's and not the member you want to go on in this case. It's it for the double, ops the back off, flash available for the re attempt. The flash there is Bumpkin Boy just surviving, dropping the smite for a little bit of health back. A jacked up stuff. Hole in my head, a bird of trouble. No, no, no. Rift Child not secured. Blue team securing that. So that's going to be Jack picking that up. Plus the Singer kill. Not looking too good as they do neutralize that 4 to 4. Yeah. We're trying to do the best they can to try and uh, keep that turret alive. Beautiful engagement with the from Pen Dragon. Able to finish it off as he does pick up the kill on a Draven. So that's going to be the second a death on a cash out. But uh, SAB now stuck between a pike and a hard place. Beautiful crescendo. Unfortunately, not going to be enough as the turret does drop an SAB. Bodyguard. Berserk, Bumpkin Boy, beautifully timed with Sandra's self ultimate means that there will not be a Demacia brought down on his head. Holder on the other hand, hand has to flash out of that one to make sure that he stays alive. The silence into that little bit of slither of health, but Bumpkin Boy both surviving with your. Oh, actually, hold that thought. Uh, having a bit of a rough time at this stage. Whoa. Interesting decision by Mordekaiser. That worked out very, very, very nicely. So now Rift Herald. Secured for the sign of blue takes away any opportunity for a steal. I can respect that decision. A very, very risky attempt, despite there being no flash. A little bit too close for comfort, in my opinion. So uh, that's a bit of a scary one. Oh, Streamlabs seems to be freezing a little bit. Apologies about that, guys. With the with the farm, he's at the moment a bit behind, so maybe it would be worth it to try and get pick up more farm or the late game. He can maybe just sit in the side lane and then Ooh, join team so fights. Bumble trash plus the dredge line could be enough for the late heal. Not gonna be able to keep him alive. Tiny game of dropping the ball a little bit there, but uh, so no, yet again getting caught out. Not a massive lead, but it is three to naught in favor of the sign of WHS. So so far early game. Uh, Looking like a damn blue side dominated match, meanwhile bot side, it may just be the last stacks tiny gamer. Oh, nice little flash, but the, the cow, Sona blocking it just in time, a slit of health available. But that uh, death, it's still a little bit too greedy, but meanwhile top side, Mr. Poe now. Go Wait, hang on, that's an interesting interaction. I guess it was Vi that was taken to the Shadow Realm, so the 1v1 into the 1v1 again. But uh, bot side, Sona, like I mentioned, overstaying, just luckily surviving, so... That's going to be uh, Lucian with us. And again, we have a TP up on Urgot. We have a TP up on Nudie. Echo. 
gets the pick onto your head. A whole little bit of trouble. Lockdown gonna be there. The shutdown is there as well. And uh, misfortune with the Zony ultimate says no friends. You're not allowed to step up to this contest. Tier 2 turret now down. Oh, Pandragon though. Pips from Nexon against the Drake. That is not what you can do when your drag or your jungle is not there. Garen dying just before that big risk fight. Welcome back, ladies and gents. We have now game three on our hands of Wonderboom versus PRG. And uh, it's been an interesting few games here. I mean, it was looking like PRG was running away with the game so hard in game one. They had such massive gold leads and it just seemed like I, uh, Wonderboom had no chance of coming back. And then somewhere along the lines, Wonderboom on game two just brought it like, back really hard. Uh, got all of, like, basically just played um, PRG's game against them. Got all of the early objectives. Uh, some of the laning phases here and there looked a bit shaky, but overall, they, they realizing what PRG are doing in the early invades, just stacking together in a, br in a safe brush, not a overextended brush, and then catching them off guard, getting an early kill onto the ADC, which transitioned very well into the late game for them. So um, I'm really just looking like, it's looking like Wonderboom is almost adjusting to PRG and doing some really great things along the line. So I'm looking to see what they're going to do this game. At the moment, it seems like Wonderboom is not going to change up their bands, still the same as last game. PRG is going to opt in to take away some of Wonderboom's bands. There, so they're going to bands. Yeah, they're yeah. going to have to change up from the side of Wonderboom because now they have the Nautilus, Volibear, and any band away. So we're going to have to see what team comp they're going to bring out this time. So yeah, like you mentioned, those were all bans from the previous match. So I can't understand it. Well, a lot of work. And uh, looks like we're going back to the exhaust Leona for this uh, third and final game between IBC and PRG. And uh, Alistair, there it is, the counter pick. I still that what I sat with what I said beforehand. I don't like the Leona as a as a blind pick. I feel like Leona, very situational, needs to be sort of as a counter matchup more so than a blind pick. So we have the Thresh, which is almost just as good as the Alistair. That uh, Flay able to break the Zenith Blade paired with the Ash, which uh, do quite a lot of work for the side of uh, IBC. So the takeaway draft coming through. So far, off to a much better start for the side of, of PRG. Yeah, see, I really like that. A lot of teams miss the point and thinking, we have to ban out this. This this was good, we have to ban it. But if you have the chance, try and counter pick it or try and pick things away. If it's if it's in your champ pool and you think you can play it well, pick it away. If you have something in your champ pool that is really good into it, counter pick it. We don't always have to look at banning something out that was strong. Maybe try and if you just try and, uh, you know, work against it or around it. And in this case, Picking away the Ash really good. Make sure that uh, the enemy team has to adapt to you now. Counter lock and will be that uh, Lucian. I mean, Lucian super early tempo. A carry kind of wants to just match Ash. Quite interested to see when there will be the standard Ash build. build or going for that uh, cheeky Triforce uh, comet build that we've seen so much of recently. I believe Sneaky making that quite popular. But uh, Lucian plus uh, Leona, the double R. Super hyper tempo lane. They want to play very aggressive. Speaking of Alicia, though, so let's have you seen the uh, the good effects on the rift as well as all the stuff on Rift about Alicia's wife becoming a character for the next. Uh all uh, right, release. you mean Senna? Yes, I've mm -hmm. heard about Senna being a thing. Uh, it's all speculation though, right? No, 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 it's pretty much guaranteed at this point. There was a thread about uh, a giant article that was posted with like lore. No, uh, yeah. fair enough. I uh, have to see what Riot will give us then. I mean, I'm. There's a, there's, a, there's a lot of things that's a bit weird though, what's her weapon going to be, because you I mean Lucian has a gun, I mean, if Lucian is in the same game as her, you can't magically just give her a gun back, what is he going to use? I, I I don't know that part, I haven't read it yet, but there's a, there's a long post on, on the bread that was uh, posted by Riot Games, I believe somewhat recently in the last few days, so new champion, Lucian's wife, almost 90% confirmed. But uh, Diana could be locked in. Diana, super, super scary champion if you do know how to play it correctly. Getting that reset off the queue. Plus, uh, our combination can be quite deadly despite all the nerfs and changes and whatnot. Syndra gonna be the next takeaway though. Plus, the Vega. A lot of mid lane centric bans. Yeah, and one thing to, to keep in mind here, I do believe actually that. The Diana was picked away from Deadly Virus. It is one of his mains, and you said he, the person needs to have forty uh, more than fifty games. Always, almost reached your mark there. Diana, forty-one games, sixty-three percent win rate. So actually, 
actually a really good pick in the first rotation here because I mean Peanut can play it and they can actually maybe flex it to mid lane. So actually not a bad pick here because not only do they pick away from from the mid laner because they did ban away his any his Vigar and the Syndra. So actually it leaves not many picks open for the enemy and they're gonna have to maybe force them onto the Yasuo, which is a secondary and that's not that doesn't have a very good win rate. Forty one percent win rate on the Yasuo. So let's see what the mid lane is. Um, I don't think so. Why has it not been Why has it not been picked up to this point? I mean, uh, for either side, is that's a good question. Ramus lock in though. I don't like the Ramus pick into this comp. They've got a one eighty draft so far. That's the Ash. What is the Ramus particularly going to do against the Akali and Diana? Oh, there we go. Slice towards armor. Heimerdinger. Heimerdinger. Hmm. And that's not <clears> something <throat> I see a lot. So I can't comment on that one. On on his match history, I believe. I mean. Okay, so a bit of an interesting one there. Going for a bit of a safety. Uh, put my traps still one. Put my traps down. You can't touch me, Akali. But uh, Akali almost like Pantheon being pretty much pick or ban at this point. Same with Ryze, but we have the Yorick Lucky for the top side. So I believe Nasus versus Yorick. Battle of the Shovel and uh, Kane. Looking at the, the comp, Sinister, any thoughts, any thoughts on the draft? I actually, I like PRG's change up in the, in the draft. It looks like they are going to most likely, no swaps just yet, but it looks like they are going to put Peanut actually on this Diana and the Kali and mid lane on last Airblade. So um, picking it away, but actually just giving it to the jungler rather than the mid laner, which is fine. Diana is a is a decent jungler. So i um, looking forward to that. Other than that, it, we have PRG on the Yorick. I mean, Yorick is not something we see very often. And a lot of teams these days, he used to be very strong a few patches ago. But um, it could actually be a really good side split push. I feel like it's something that can definitely deal with the Nessus effectively if he uh, gets a few items and maybe doesn't fall behind too much. Is it nerf? Uh, is it nerf a middle? I don't feel so. It just feels like the meta just probably maybe just doesn't really suit him that much. But he was just fizzled he, out. Yeah, he just feels like uh, he, should, he should still be fairly decent, I believe. You will have that three minutes back to delay, guys. But if you are just joining us now, currently IBC versus PRG game three of the best of three for the final series of the uh, of the evening. But uh, we'll be back tomorrow, I believe, from half past nine once again. Uh, three series finals being best of five, which uh, should be pretty hype around 5:36 ish, I believe, tomorrow. But uh, so far, so good. So, is there any team in particular that we've casted tonight that you're watching out for for finals? Um, there's actually one we haven't cast yet, which is uh, something that we need to watch out for. Apparently, they took first place in last leg, and that is um, how do you say it again? Um, I always forget the school's name. Grandly High School. So that's something we're gonna have to look out for. It's uh, got our good old friend McLean in the top lane. His school. Oh right, okay. Yeah. So there's uh, there, that's there. a team to watch out for. Other than that, Paul Rus. These are the two teams that are. Uh, sort of see, like they they the, the top two teams of, to, according to log, but uh, I mean if Wonderboom can bring the fight so much to uh, PRG, I I still think it's fair ground. I think all of these teams feels like they're fairly matched, even though the fact that Peanut is a diamond jungler here in this team, it just feels like he's a uh, he he's, he sort of just still fits in. He has really good players here and there, but it's not like he's solo carrying the games, which is really good to see. So it means like the teams are actually stepping up by quite a bit. Yeah, it's good to see, like you said, I mean, if there are coaches involved or people giving advice, clearly starting to show as the players do start to progress towards that point where they're getting more, a little bit more competitive. Um, still not a fair, like, uh, not a fan of the exhaust, Leona, which we've sort of gone back to at this point, but uh, I'm doing it up to go for Barrier. Pretty understandable, this game, not that much CC outside of, like, the Thresh-Ash combination. Maybe the Yorick slow, but... Uh, Dana should uh, have a little bit of a trouble with one shooting through that Heimer, at least with Heimer's barrier rather for the, the early stages especially. Yeah, and I mean, there's not too much. Like, the Ramus is really nice if you have a very hard AD team, but they have a lot of combination. I mean, Yorick even has a little bit of AP damage, but Akali, Diana, uh, all AP. So it's uh, they have a, at least early spread damage. Uh, um, it shouldn't be too much of a problem for, that, for their team if the Ramus does stack armor, and that's what he does best. But other than that, they have a fairly safe comp, actually. Uh, I think it's a bit counterintuitive. Almost they have this comp that's uh, safe and that maybe wants to try to scale that. It feels like they may be going to lack a lot of damage from Wonderboom, actually. 
Because if Heimerdinger doesn't get ahead or doesn't get any items, uh, Nash is, is going to have to scale hard. If the, the, I think there's a lot riding on Lucian uh, getting the early game fed in the bot lane. How do you see the Nasus versus Yorick matchup working top? Do you feel like it's just going to be farming up lane, or do you feel like there's going to be some attempts at uh, some blood? I think if it's just going to be farm up lane, I think Nasus wins that. So I think it's going to be up to the Yorick slash Peanut to try and maybe put some uh, pressure onto the top lane. It's one of those fighters that I feel like maybe he needs a little bit of an advantage, either CS-wise or maybe a kill. So I think we need to see Diana maybe just pop up in the top lane. And even if he just provides some pressure so the Yorick can farm uh, better than the Nasus at least, it's going to help the Yorick more. I think if it's just a farm lane for both, I think Nasus wins that game because Nasus can build damage like the Triforce and then go full tank where Yorick needs to maybe get a bit more than that to, to actually stay competitive because the Nasus will just keep on scaling with his Q when Yorick does not. Um, end game time? Seven seconds. Eight. Nine, nine, ten, ten, perfect. Okay, and then just all the other good stuff Baron and Dragon timers and scoreboard. So we'll see if we go for that stat invade. A bit of a different strategy coming through the uh, full stack in the tri brush. But uh, PRG not going for the standard Rita seems they've gotten a little bit more smart, a little bit smarter. Uh, it seems like they're just going to both teams are going to stack, but they're going to do both defensive stacking. Nice, we're gonna we we learning boys. We to be coming better for finals tomorrow. PRG's becoming a little bit more of a, a little bit more advanced the further into the the evening and the tournament we go. Yeah, I mean, I feel like if teams don't scrim often, they won't know what other teams are doing. So in this case, if they just keep on playing games, they slowly learn what teams do, what the uh, overall, you know, um, trends are among teams, get to know each other's picks and how each other's play style works. So I think it's uh, overall, especially of this game going to game of three, they probably know by this stage they need to like watch out for certain things. The top side start coming through versus the chicken side. That's a bit of an interesting one. You don't really see that many junglers going chickens anymore. It's a camp that generally allows you to start without a pull, which is pretty massive, honestly. Uh, especially for the bot lane. Getting to lane on time or early can result in a completely different outcome to the lane. Yeah, I don't know if it works that well for the Ramus, though. He's going to have a fairly slow clear, I think, if he's going for that. But he is going to have a high XP clear. Maybe looking to gank bot early to get the a kill onto the Lucian. As I mentioned in Champ Select, it feels like the Lucian is going to be a, a, a source of damage in this team that are going to heavily heavily rely on since they don't have too many hard carries, I would say. Deadly Virus be, I mean is more of a, a defensive champion on that Heimerdinger. You have to be pretty fit to play aggressively um, forward. Almost a hard champion to play, I would say, especially when it comes to late game team fighting. Oh, Xenoblade not gonna be there just short. Listen the first attempt, the hook to the minion will get the dash out of Bunny. He's a little bit happy on that trigger, so zoning hooks and zoning Xenos so far. The whole thing with Heimerdinger is if, if the enemy team keeps on running it down on your turrets, it's it's not that hard to team fight. But if you need to set up team fights around a team fight already happening, then it, it gets much harder with the Heimerdinger to make sure you're set up and ready for these type of team fights. I mean, how often does someone take a fight in the t into the Heimer doing a turret? I mean, outside of like a Baron, perhaps? It'd be pretty silly to do that kind of thing. Yeah, Maybe definitely. Check. But I mean, that's what makes it a hard champion to play into the late game. It's fine in laning phase, but I mean, when it comes later, will you be able to make sure you are set up and ready for this fight, like I mentioned? True. Fair enough. So far, so good. Only three minutes in, and uh, gold pretty much even slight advantage going to the side of PRG. Imagine someone abused this, uh, the, this the buff Chaco in top lane AP. I would definitely be interested to see that. Yes, yeah, uh, something else to note. Yeah, nobody's really touched Chaco despite the the, the buff being so massive for AP Chaco. Perhaps nobody really stay on top of the patches or being a Chaco player as they are quite uncommon. 
bot side though, Xenoblade was uh, used exhaust super early, so that's very nicely done by Leona, looking to pull the damage to Flash now, but heal's still available, trying to kite it out. Yeah, and I think that could have been very successful for them, but they were sort of split up a bit, Leona was sort of going over to focusing the Thresh, Diana. Oh. Uh, for the flank, the Zenith play the flash out from uh, the great first blood going to be going through as Ramus switches off, finishes off Diana. So Blue Side taking the oh flash stun actually a fire. Great Zenith play connection, Bunny Pilot picking it up. So two kills for Blue straight off the bat. Yeah, and that's pretty important for the Lucian, and that's now the kill over to to the early game Lucian, like I said, and that's what they really want for this team. And I'll actually call it that the Ramus might be looking to. Get an early gank and bot, and as I did, it happened. Actually, really nice timing from both the junglers showing up at the same time. Yeah, like you mentioned very well, Red, a counter gank is worth twice as much as a regular gank. But it's coming in once the enemy jungler is overextended, burnt all their stuff to try and engage. Quite easy, just clean it up and uh, and uh, reap all the the rewards. Topside Nasus versus the uh Ergon Ergon, sorry, Yorga kinda looks like Nasus. The skins are first both visually similar, similar with the same color scheme. Yeah, and this is really important, I think, that the Yorick is trying to zone him off the farm because like I said, if this is just the even matchup and Yorick just lets Nasus farm and they both just farm it up like almost like a bro lane. That will definitely go in Nasus favor. So I think the fact that he's trying to zone him off with his ghouls is very important. It means he's getting most of the farm and Nasus needs to play safe. So that's going to help him a lot. And that's the little lead that I was talking about, either in CS or kills that he needs to have to have that advantage. Top side 36 to 10. Uh, Nasus a little bit far behind the stage, which is kind of really crappy in the sense that Nasus wants to be able to farm up towards that late game scale. He cannot afford to fall behind in the early stages. But uh, mid siege continuing the push, at least the hybrid forcing the perma shard, and uh, Carly somewhat struggling with that uh, that weave. And uh, it's great rotation. Saying that, looks like Wonderboom is going to continue the trend of last game. Um, just going to go for early game objectives and uh, Earth Drake. A lot of Earth Drakes apparently this. Uh, this tournament and uh, that's going to be really good from into the late game. Not gonna happen too much at this stage. Not not really a laning phase Drake, if you will. But it all adds up. Blue team securing that uh, mountain Drake, like you mentioned. It's gonna be using that for the sieges that should come through in uh, shortly. I mean, it, it is uh, extra damage on plates, for example, which is quite massive. If you uh, manage to get to the tier one before the 14 minute mark. This is pretty good for the Nasus now shoving underneath the tower, so he'll be able to farm a bit more safely without being pushed off of the minions by the Yorick. You can see that the farm lead for the Yorick has been growing and growing, and at this stage, oh, that's Ash. Cheeky Zen played into the stun, so that's the free kill. Lucian starting to snowball, and Peanut needs to get on the board if he wants to try and carry his team to victory for the third and final match of the series. Yeah, and uh, Lucian, Leona doing the job as they should be and on this uh, early game combo that they have. Heimerdinger just uh, perking the Akali off the wave all the time and he actually did see Deadly Virus did back for that uh, last chapter. So he's going to have much less mana issues now, going to be able to poke and push the wave without any hassles. Lucian with the reset as well as Leona's bot lane from Blue just heading back to the bot side. Looking at the gold department, pretty even in terms of the Lucian versus Ash, despite that death already starting to show up. Bot side, so the Ramus pressure being asserted, but not actually getting them too much of a lead outside of that maybe 12, 12 CS equivalent kill. Diana hovering around top side, wants to try to get the pick off onto the Nasus and uh, try to let the Yorick snowball continue. It's already 34 CS up, that's a massive equivalent of. Uh, which is short of three kills. Nasus. Nasus is going to level six. And Nasus is going to spot the Diana out, so he's just going to walk it off. Nasus playing very safe this game. He doesn't 
walk around up unnecessarily. He doesn't stay on the tower. He just walks to the river, make sure he tries to spot out the jungle, and it's actually paying off. Yes, he's falling behind on CS quite a bit, actually. So, yes, he's falling behind, but at least he's not giving any kills over, which, I mean, it has a give and take. He's going to fall down up behind a lot more and more, 20 to 64 CS in that top lane. I mean, yeah, at, at what stage? Pretty massive, to be honest. Yeah, what, at what stage is it like worth giving up so much CS, not giving over a kill? Do you just try and farm up on Nasus and be useful late game, even though you get killed by a Diana jungle, or do you go for the CS and just give over the kills? I mean, it's a it's a hard question. A lose lose situation. Yeah. Ash though gets the lockdown. A little bit of a Leona knock as well. Uh, not gonna be enough, unfortunately. Thresh picking up the kill on illusions as a support. Frost forcing the flash out does end up resulting in a almost death for Gr uh, for Frimp, but uh, for, uh, Fi burning his own flash, unfortunately not able to get close enough to finish off that last little bit of damage. So it's gonna be uh, PRG finally on the board now with that uh, next kill. Yeah, see, good job to them. Nasus is trying to farm with his uh, with his E, and that's not going to help him too much. I mean, even if you get the XP and the gold, it's not going to stack your Q, and that's really what you want. Yeah, unless you're going AP Nasus, that's different. But that's more of an ARM specialty. Yeah, you can see two levels up on the on the Yorick now. Flash or flash? Is that not going to connect? Whoops, Leona. Yeah, I think this is a smart move being on the bot, bot side the whole time. You can see that, uh, obviously, we've, we've touched on quite a bit this Nasus is... He's almost putting himself out of this game. He's two levels behind and almost three now. And he's... Uh, he is, is This Yorick no, is going to back... Yeah, is, this Yorick is going to back with like a Triforce and absolutely just destroy the game. Yeah, 24 to 83 is huge. I mean, props to Yorick for missing almost no CS this game, having the most on the team. But uh, that first pack is going to be massive, like you mentioned. They're going to have to send multiple members up to deal with Yorick late game, to be honest. I'm pretty sure. Thrash caught out. Blue side rotation. Deadly virus picking up that kill. But uh, look at the gold bomb and top side. I mean, 25 versus 85 CS. That's... Uh... Oh. Hold up, thought. He does connect to Carly. He made this up to take it. He does actually delete it. Peanut finishing off that kill, but the fight's not done just yet. The torrent's going to be there. As well as the topside dive. What are you doing, Urgot? Or Yarek, rather. Ends up going down to the Nasus. Nasus just using the charity's advantage as uh, Airblade tries for the disengage, but will not be able to pull it through. The full curl to the face. Peanut just soaking it up. Does not have uh, the, the cooldowns to just get that reset, unfortunately. And I mean, that's really something you can't uh, afford on the Yorick. You've been having such a great game. You haven't backed yet for any items. You can't be taking these, this uh, this fight underneath the tower. Yeah. Uh, I mean, how, how to throw 101. Yeah, definitely. If you if you backed, got those items and came back to lane, then maybe yes. But at this stage, you, you're you just giving over a massive lead that you bought yourself the whole game long. Yeah, you're sort of just sort of gifting them the, the game back to the, in their favor to an extent. Yeah, he was sort of one of the... Because at the moment, uh, Wonderboom is still doing really well this game. They are 6-4. They're both uh, one rank up. And I mean, it's anyone's game. And I think a very big deciding factor is going to be on how many members he can draw to the top lane. And that's going to depend on how strong he is. And in this case, if Nasus can just deal with them, then that's going to be an all factor. I mean, I'm still pretty sure that Yorick is ahead despite that. I mean, he's uh, just short of a thousand gold advantage and it's only 12 minutes in, so that is massive. Um, but uh, I'd like to see him play a little bit safer until the jungler gank or potentially when he gets that try force. But uh, very, very shaky play coming through Deadly Virus Force. Above, drop dropped this stopwatch, then I played so, uh, Leona here for the counter, but Deadly Virus will go down as the Ash Arrow connects onto the NASA style. Uh, may just lose use a, like at least two place topside before he gets back, so I don't really know about that uh, that call. Perhaps a desperation play. And that's gonna be even more gold over to the Yorick. Hundred CS now on the Yorick at 13 minutes. Not too bad. Uh, Yorick's place. Apparently going to stand still in the brush for a bit, not clear the ward, and then walk away. Anyways, but ping it, so they know. Watch Next time, boys, you walk around this bush. There's a control ward there. I'm not going to take it, though. 
Not knowing where Ramos is, perhaps just playing it safe. Don't want to, don't want to risk the fact that he may just get caught out. Back to the farm game. 106 to 46, 60 CS difference. Top. That's more than more than 50 farm difference. Yarek only taking one base so far in this game, but uh, Carl on the other hand and getting punished pretty hard. Mainly take her own. Oh, well, Heimerding actually starting to deal a good amount of damage. He does have that Luden's Echo down now, so uh, if, he, if he trade that Akali takes. Rest in peace. Ramos here for the late rotation. Don't know if that's a good idea. Just gonna clear the pink ward. They may just lose that tier one tire top and. Uh, oh, nope. 14 minute mark means no more plate goal. Peanut on the other hand, deadly virus. Right down the middle between the two, and that's gonna be the, uh, a free kill over as a result. That's, uh, that's a bit of a yikes, he hates it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate. I think Wonderboom was uh, looking pretty strong last game, but this this time it looks like they are giving over more and more. And Diana 4 for 1 now. Yorick, so much farm. These two, I think, are set to carry the game. And even so, even still, this bot lane, uh, Ashen um, Thresh not doing too badly. The CS is not that big of a deficit. She has that one item done, so it's not like she is going to be fairly useless in the late game. And she does scale much better than the Lucian. So I still really think that PR, uh, PRG is doing pretty well and uh, are going to look to take this top tower, maybe. Yeah, Rift Journal on the map, next 14 minutes and 30 seconds or so, but uh, tier 1 turret. thing is with the Nasus is, do you really want to take the turret? Keeping it up will deny him CS and let him stack slowly, but uh, leaving it up on the other hand will slow down the game entirely, which is not exactly what you want versus the Nasus. You sort of want to snowball the game and close it as soon as possible. Speaking of which, Peanut, look at him apply that pressure. He wants to pull the trigger, he does land the reset, a lot of damage. As this popping the ulti for extra lord of health, looking for those cane stacks, but Peanut now out of mana can't actually pull the damage to finish it off, so they're both gonna survive. Unfortunately, no TP available it means like that uh Hyper Digger will have to rotate up and give up his midwave to try and defend this tier one turret. Still fighting for the first brick. Yeah, and I think Yorick is going to back now on two thousand gold. That should most probably be a completed triforce. Gonna get a pause. Yep. Wonder what's the problem. Bunny pilot pause, so it's a pause from uh, Wonderboom side. It's the reason given, doesn't look like it. Oh, there it is. Okay. Multiple members disconnecting and reconnecting, perhaps just their, their network uh, giving some issues, maybe the router that they're, they're playing off of. Yeah, and um, yeah, I would definitely, if I... Someone needs to rename themselves from Wonderboom to Boomslang. The Boomslang of Wonderboom. Uh, Be a pretty cool name, not gonna lie, if it's not taken already. Most probably. I, I, someone must have probably taken that name, 100%. So we kind of see that uh, uh, Peanut playing a little more aggressive this game, something he's a little more comfortable on than the Evelyn Diana. Only 4 for 1, kind of trying to look to exploit that top lane Nasus, who's uh, been a little bit too overextended. Or uh, playing it a little bit uh, dangerously. Living a life on the edge, getting punished for it. Ramus, nowhere to be seen. But the top players are definitely working out so far. Oh, replay pause for a second or two. What's your in game time? Uh, 16 30, 31, 32. I'm at 33, 34. I'm going to pause at 35. 31. Okay, yeah, 35. 3, 2, 1, go. Break. Ooh. Oh, beautifully placed sort of flare into that Zenith plus lockdown combo. The year of the death for Ash cannot afford to leave your support alone like that versus a ready to go Leona. It's a good trigger pull. Yeah, maybe the maybe a tactical port off pause after all, maybe. <laughs> so Drake of the map in just a moment, 17 minutes in one mountain to one mountain. Ram is heading towards the top side of the map while Diana makes her way towards that Drake priority. Just gonna control vision in advance. Interesting though, it seems like a normal slime has pinged that Leona's flash is down. Not realizing that the it was actually a Zenith blade and not a flash. It was our Zenith blade, not our flash. Fight top side. Maiden is here. You cannot afford to fight Yorick and his maiden. It just makes him too powerful, but it looks like he will be forced to flash out in the 1v3 situation. As Midden is cleared, nice little hook that's gonna be connected. 
And that will result in a free kill on to uh, Faiso. And 3 million Rams. percent up to a Yorick, and it seems like he might walk this out, don't know? He gets nope. off. Nice little pick, so that's deadly for us. Uh, able to secure that one, Ash, Arrow and all. Keeping one member of the three in place, but not enough to keep his mate alive, unfortunately. But they will not go home empty-handed, as uh, everybody's a winner. So that tier one turret potentially looking to try and uh, crumble. Diana busy with the roof tunnel at the same time. We saw him solo Baron earlier in the, I think it was the first game, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so too many rift. And it's sending three members top was a fair bit of investment from Wonderboom side, and they are going to look at getting this uh, rift herald. It will be picked up by Peanut. Meanwhile, in the bot lane, Bunny Pillar is looking to uh, maybe get the spot tower. No, it will be a TP from Yorick trying to save a tower. Yeah, just cancelling out that siege, putting their bot lane top and the top lane bottom. If that works on their favor, I mean, support nowhere to be seen. Sort of hovering around for Charlie Vision in the bottom side jungle. Opportunity to strike would be now if you like to decide to do so before Leona gets back to lane. Hmm, playing very aggressive here on the Yorick. Zenith Blade. Need to watch out there. Yorick is pretty fed at this stage. I mean, same for Lucian. They are going to be big boys up against each other. Will Leona be able to lock them down enough? Find out next time. Rams, on the other hand, says find out now whether this taunt's going to be enough to finish it off. Zenith Blade does connect through the Shroud, actually. Big fight that Surly Club's coming in massive as the Ash Arrow connects. Trying to fight for his life, but unfortunately, Akali now dead. Leona as well. Multi member from the either side. So very nicely played team fight from across the map. Just uh, ulties flying left, right, and center. The flash, very optimistic. Ooh. Both ADCs flashed, expended. Bunny Pie completely out of mana. Needs some just respect. Keeping in Rip mind channeled. that they did leave, the, by rotating to the mid lane, they did leave the Auric open to freely push bot lane with his maiden. So that's probably going to be a free tower for him. Yeah, potentially could have been two had the roof tunnel been given over to the Yorick opposed to Diana, but uh, it happens. Diana now dead, still sitting on that uh, rift objective, just uh, about to hit that halfway point to expiration. Yep, and it uh, does seem like we have Leona coming from the side here. I think Yorick is aware that he might be over pushing a little bit too much, so he is going to just try and get some Krugs, but realizes, you know what, seems things are a bit fishy. Everyone's missing on the map. I think yeah, Krugs. The one ward might have spotted our time ending there as he was walking past the raptor camp. There is a red ward there. So I'm just gonna back it off. Farm safe. Frags make for a good meal, it seems. Upside, last air bear. Gonna be fancy, but fancy meets Kane. Lantern here for the counter. The flash out oh, looking for the popcorn. It's not gonna be there, so it looks like NASA's might be a bit of trouble. Oh, nope, no snare connection. You know, bot side on the other side, on oh, the opposite side of the map. Peanut picking up the first kill, able to just assassinate Pilot. Trying to go for the second one. Does get the double on top side. Oh, Lantern to the save. Ramus is coming around. He's gonna try and maybe get the the Kali still. Big Rift Tower is gonna be abused in the bottom. Nice little cheeky stop. I don't think he needed to go over. He will pay the price. He does end up going down. Unfortunately, the Ash are not able to keep him alive. He cannot kite through the. Pirates, what are you doing, friend? Dies for it, but the siege continues. Bot side, the two man momentum going. Rooftail Shelly in pocket. Looking to try and push up onto that Nexus now. May just get a Nexus turn as a result. The overreach coming through you. And uh, Blue Side here now for the counter as the charge it does go through. And the, dis, uh, the disengage actually hang on the Zenith Blade. And. Uh, Yorick is a big boy, you need to watch on. Yep, he has the maiden, he cannot fight. A Yorick with his mid, and this may just be the game right here off of this play. The overextend the Dino double kill, looking for the triple, the baby cage as well. Big boy plays coming through, and that most likely will be the Nexus off of this push. Very what early are game. you guys doing? Too many throws in a row will just cost them the game here at this stage, and we're gonna have a 22 minute game just due to a really good Herald and Yorick being, being played in the bot lane. Yeah, GG, well played. The, the momentum just. Rotating and uh, punishing mispositions. It might not just be done yet, though. Thresh, where do you come from? Where do you go? <laughs> Nexus now currently chilling on a little bit of health left, and uh, 
It seems like it's not done and dusted just yet. The GG's will did come out in chat, but uh, a little bit too soon. The early GG's called, but that's going to be a, a free infernal by the looks of it. They might even look at maybe setting up vision around Baron here because if the bot lane is pushing in, it's quite a far bit to rotate to get all the way from bot lane to Baron and uh, contest that. And keep in mind that it is an open Nexus versus a Yorick who has teleport available in the next 30 seconds or so, so they're kind of just standing there. I'm not too sure if they're winning for a teleport or what the story is here. Yeah, red but, team uh, did ping out. That. There's a ward there. So they might actually look at the back door here. I highly doubt that Yorick will go for that. I feel like Yorick could just set, uh, potentially set bot lane and put the rest of the team tops up by Baron and do a bit of a dance. If they go for the Baron, then just go for the uh, Nexus if your team goes for the Baron and they rotate, then you just finish the game. If not, you just infinitely push and apply pressure to the point where somebody misplays and you get that lead from that way. But a uh, very, very good spot for the side of PRG despite the kills being so close. Here's the vision gonna come through for the Baron here. They're going to probably just uh, wait till someone face checks because I mean Yorick is going to have his uh, Maiden up very soon and we already spoke about uh, you, that the way that you cannot fight him in his Maiden with two Infernal Drakes. So just pushing the top lane and then getting Baron would be a smart Ooh. move here. Zanya is gonna be burned apparently. Peanut picking up the red buff and posting giving it to his Ash. That's an interesting decision. But uh... Baron, sort of the main priority now for the vision department, at least trying to just clear up and uh, potentially take it or use it as a tool for bait. PRG. Yorick has not spawned his maiden yet, though, but he is there. Are tempting the Baron. So. Yep, there we go. Baron is taken up. The, let's wait for the team fight that's about to break out. They have Yorick in the top, they have the rest of the four members in mid, so they're just going to march it and uh, force people to rotate. I think at this stage, Nasus can't really deal with the Yorick. A lot of damage. Speaking of which, look to just try to assassinate him. That is so much damage, but unfortunately not going to be able to finish him off just yet. As the TNT turret uh, is uh, going to be quite easily taken down. Yorick is backing to get health and looks like... Uh, I mean, Nasus is backing to get health. Oh, Ash Arrow? Ash, oh, look at get the pick off. He does connect to Lucia. Lucia, a bit of trouble with Diana, though. The assassination is going to be right there into the thresh hook. And uh, Peanut looking to pop off. As uh, the tier, turret, oh, tier 3 turret does break it. Him to I suppose, fly. Super low may just go down to the Winions. Not quite going to get there, but the slow just out of range. PRG. Maiden. And I think this might be it. It seems like the Yorick is Yorick. trying to finish the game. He wants the big W, but the Nexus is not going to go down just yet. They're looking to pack the KDAs and the stats of the triple kill for Diana and showing us why he's the player to watch out. One assist short of that 13 with 3 for 7 and the lead status. But GG well played. Uh, PRG taking the big victory, actually. Yeah, and that's going to be a fairly close game. I've wondered when playing really, really well, considering that PRG is sort of one of the favorites for the tournament. Well done to, to Wonderboom putting up a, a very good fight here. Uh, Bunny Pilot specifically this game and the uh, Pfizer Bite in the bot lane. So they played very well, but unfortunately overall it's just uh, too much. The Yorick just got too much farm. Peanut getting a lot of uh, lot of pressure down with that Diana. So uh, PRG is just uh, the better one this tournament. And uh, you see the damage as well. Peanut 21,000 damage on that Diana, even though Yorick had all of that uh, time to poke and and, uh, you know, damage people in lane. 100%. So that is the game and the series. Done and dusted. PRG taking the big W. So very well played by both sides. Um, Hyman taking took a lot more work than expected in the mid lane, at least. Uh, I kind of thought the Akali was going to look for some sort of a roam slash abuse. The fact that Hyman doesn't particularly leave lane too well. But it uh, didn't come down to that. But uh, nonetheless... Very, very nicely, nicely played. Uh, that bot lane rotation was clean and quick. Straight to the execution. Unfortunately, we weren't able to finish with that push, but uh, it didn't stop them from taking the big win using that tempo and uh, a very, very nice and entertaining series. Yeah, definitely. And I'm looking forward to see what's going to come from uh, tomorrow's games and uh, how the teams will adapt. I mean, at this stage, it just seems like Peanut will not get to play his usual junglers, junglers ever. 
Yeah, as expected. I mean, it's kind of understandable. Bernard, the highest ranked player in the team. Definitely. And uh, until we see someone that is comfortable enough to try and counter pick him, it will be continuing the trend most probably tomorrow. Yeah, 100%. Guys, so if you don't know already, tomorrow, uh, Sunday, from Hoppers 9, GMT Plus 2, the games will continue, I believe. But uh, for tonight, the Saturday cast, I believe we are done and dusted now. Myself, Sheepy as well, Sinister on the cast. And uh, Sinister, it's been an absolute pleasure. Yep, really great as usual. Uh, casting the games and uh, enjoying South African League, especially with these high school teams. Yeah, the, the new upcoming talent, 100%. But uh, other than that, guys, we will see you tomorrow. So it's time for dinner, guys. If you haven't already eaten, if you weren't watching slash eaten. Otherwise, uh, I'm not too sure if Worlds is still going on, if it's done for the day. But uh, from everybody uh, this side of the cast, we'll check you guys tomorrow. It's just That's pretty good. That's fair enough for them. And what will they do with it, though? It looks like they are Don't going to... Don't need to take a team fight. Just drive the minions, but it looks like they have other plans. And Mart, beautiful two-man lockdown hangar. That's the... Second jump coming through as uh, the Sanja bites the dust and uh, red side snowball continues, Baron in hand. Yeah. Not able to get. Oh, that's gonna cost you. Nuni here on the other hand, here for the counter bumpkin boy in a little bit of trouble. Super low. The cheeky, cheeky turn back, but Echo. Wait, Berserk? There it is. Realizes, hang on, Karzix is uh, not where I thought he'd be. Let's pick up the kill. Hold my head, miss position. Done. Is enough as uh, Pen finishes the kill on the tiny game, and that's misfortune now done. Uh, Tristana is well out. Undying rage from Jacked Up Stuff says, No, friends, you're not touching me. And uh, that stack not quite working out according to plan. Bit of a back and forth. Berserk does go super low. Vladimir Ultimate should be enough as, uh, as the Poe finishes off of that one. If they can still use these CPs and the side lane pressure of the Trinity, because remember, Trinity is doing fairly well in the top lane. He has two CS up. He has oh. a kill. Speaking of uh, a head. Yeah, when Tarek does fall on Blitzcrank, going down with Rizard, that is not a turret you should be trying to defend, but Wraith on the other hand with the overextend. That's a uh, ultimate battery, that's going to be the uh, Lycan Wraith dropping down the pick as well. Lucian now dead, big fine set side of the uh, red, but here comes Mr. Poe. Does not care if you've uh, assassinated the rest of his team, he is looking to take some fights. But now return kill, Bumpkin Boy picking up that one. Plus the Yoink Fizz, ooh, misplay. Knight double tick into that uh, double kill. So the back and forth, two members alive for the two members alive, even trade. Yeah, Tristana was killed off a little bit too early in that game. And this is something I talked about last game as well when she was Kaisa. It just feels like you give this massive lead over to a bot lane. And 50 Baron now has 6,000 houses, the rest of Red Side come to the collapse. This is not what she can afford, it is a new new though. And uh, Red Turn actually falling, but here comes that curtain call, Mr. Pope, Pop Blossom. Persona now dead. First one on Karzix trading. That means no jungle left. That's the Echo double. Urgot coming in clean. It looks like Blue Side is able to clean up this fight beautifully as the Baron is now good. The best of their abilities, especially seeing as this is the first game of the, the tournament. You know, top side. Beautiful uh, cash coming through. Was the Poe very low? Unfortunately, what the pop was on the title. Wraith not going to be able to survive yet again. The one for one trade, but it looks like. Uh, Jack was an objective to throw out, so this is the big win it or break it moment. Let's see where the blue side EHS starts to rotate off. It's going to be that free objective. It looks like it will be with the blue side teleport. Trenomir going in very aggressive. Not much rage available, but that's going to be the immediate uh, rejection from Monsters. No friend, you're not allowed in this pit. Stopwatch coming and clash that little bit of health left. And uh, the fight continues. Wraith does go down. Mott not able to. Uh, be assassinated for this team fight, so he can quite easily uh, allow his team to to win and uh, carry to victory. He, he got deleted in the previous team fight, and uh, that results in the game. Wait it out. If they do face check, then we do see actually Mr. Poe is a bit low, and they are going to re back. It's actually a bit risky. I mean, oh, speaking oh, of risky, send a couple of members. Jungler on taking to the Shadow Realm with the QSS, not gonna keep him alive, but Mr. Poe's ultimate now down. No smite available from the side of. Uh... And possibly take the game here off of this play. Yeah, had lost uh, saving great opportunity. Looks for the kill to Berserk, but not gonna be able to get that as the beautifully timed ultimate comes through. As uh, actually hold that till the double kill, looking for that trade, but the shotgun and he's gonna be doing too much work. Uh, the Winnings, though, trying to finish off that last little damage. Still the. With Sona missing her ult and then. 
first trying to go in for the second engage without ult, but then the Vi ulting the wrong person. So a lot of misplays here from uh, Mbongeni High School. We're gonna misplay his first beautiful flash. It's gonna be able to finish Evolution with that early investment, giving him a little bit of time to sort of just watch. Uh, attempt at the Baron, the Crescendo gonna be able to lock down. Mr. Poe, 1,000 half left. It looks like the Baron not gonna go down just yet, but it does actually Garen not picking that objective. So that's gonna be Wrecked and Dead, plus the... Uh, Oh, Berserk not gonna get there, just short. And uh, team fight as well as the Baron, nothing more aggressive. He has the tempo, the hook and land onto the cannon. This would be a beautiful opportunity right here just to pull that trigger, the two man stack. I feel like they should look for the punish. There it is, the two man locked out, the jump in, the hop skip, pot picking up the first one, looking for the second one, has to reset the jump, but the bomb not gonna be necessary as Pen Dragon finishes off what he started. It could be. It's also um, Kung Fu Panda, I believe. That's also the, oh, right, the, turtle. Right, right, right. the turtle is called Mr. Oh. Poe, I believe. Beautiful flash. Depth charge going to be there. Unfortunately, not going to be able to land the burn skip, but it should be enough ignites. Invested on the heal a little bit late, so won't be able to get much out of, out of that. But look for that trade, but the shotgun is going to be doing too much work. Uh, the Winnings, though, trying to finish off that last little damage. Still the house plus a red buff, keeping him alive. And it seems like they would just have a last bit of breath in this game will west will be able to do anything for the, with this now is this going to be that last that loss can work so much better if you do like utility i mean yourself it could be jenna oh, top side ignite can be applied mr poe getting the kill but it looks like like and wait for the counter a lot of shield i don't know if you have the damage via aftershock and all there's we'll a way to try and force the flash away though yeah. but yeah like you like you mentioned honestly i buff but uh Oh, flash, we know mid side hole in my head. A lot of damage they're not gonna be applied. The barrier is gonna be burned very early, but Berserk finding himself in an awkward situation. The science now applied as he cuts his way towards those turrets. Flashing away beautifully played actually, so no death is gonna be coming through just yet. Jacked up stuff, dashing away as the status line comes through. But uh, not exactly what you want to be seeing, as that's got a lot of crucial ultimates now burned for the sign of red, which means there should be a free siege coming through. But Berserk has other ideas. Look at to try to take out the AD carry as uh, Wraith commits to the Mordecai's and not the member you want to go on in this case. It's it for the double. Ops to back off, flash available for the re attempt. The flash there is Bumpkin Boy just surviving, dropping the smite for a little bit of health back. The jacked up stuff, hole in my head, but a trouble. No, no, no. Rift Code now secured, Blue Team securing that, so that's going to be Jack picking that up, plus the Singe kill not looking too good, as they do neutralize that 4-4. Four four. Yeah. We're trying to do the best they can to try and uh, keep that turret alive. Beautiful engagement from Pendragon, able to finish it off as he does pick up the kill on a Draven, so that's going to be the second death on a cash out, but uh, SAB now stuck between a pike and a hard place.